Oregon State versus Oregon. The Civil War, a rivalry that dates back to 1894. The faces may change through the years, but no matter who suits up, if you win this game, you get more than just a victory. Bragging rights for the entire state. That's what you're playing for. The Beavers versus the Ducks. Farmers versus Free Spirits. A wave of orange versus a sea of green. Only 40 miles separate the two cities that couldn't be more different. We're Ballas and Eugene, two different worlds. What we do have in common, no one wants to lose this game. And this rivalry affects families who are torn apart by loyalty. I'm a duck. I'm a beaver. My whole family's a beaver. But I'm not, especially this week. Any team can win in any given year. Just look at the last 10 meetings. Oregon, five wins. Oregon State, five wins. You don't get handed anything in this game. You earn every yard. Every touchdown is cherished. Every victory, a lifetime worth of memories. Smack the quack or beat the Beavers. The 111th installment of the Civil War is next. This is a rivalry. This is the Civil War. And welcome to Jimmy V Week on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation for Cancer Research in tribute to Jim Valvano and his dream to defeat cancer. Today from sold out Autzen Stadium in Eugene, Oregon, it's the Beavers of Oregon State and the Ducks of Oregon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dan Fouts. Welcome to the Civil War and welcome to Autzen Stadium. Playing at home has been critical in the Civil War, especially the last 10 years when the home team has won each time. And it's an advantage the Ducks desperately need, especially since Dennis Dixon has gone down to his knee injury two weeks ago. An offense that was once called the best in the nation is now having to reinvent itself against one of the best defenses in the nation, the Oregon State Beavers. The Beavers are rolling while the Ducks are reeling. The Beavers have won five of their last six games. Their only loss coming in in Los Angeles against the Trojans. My partner is Tim Brand, and Tim, both these teams play great defense, but both these teams have very inexperienced quarterbacks. No question. I know you remember your first college start. Your heart is in your throat. Well, that's Cody Kemp today for Oregon. His first college start, he's playing in a game of this magnitude. It's a civil war. So the question begs, how does he manage those emotions? How does he manage this game? Well, what he needs, he needs running back Jonathan Stewart to step up and play hurt and play well. He needs Jason Williams to make some catches. He dropped six balls last week, and he needs the offensive line to block pass block run block give him some protection meanwhile on the other side Oregon State Lau Moy Val he's making his third college start he's 2 and 0 continues to get better as a matter of fact he thought he should have been starting the whole time look at his numbers from last week he is a confident fun filled loose let it go type fast twitch guy but Mike Riley told me that Everson Bernard the 1000 yard rusher is not playing today and so that now puts more pressure on Moy Val. Tim, the third member of our broadcast team is Portland native Todd Harrison. Todd, big question marks around the running backs today. Dan, no question about it. When you have two inexperienced quarterbacks, you're going to lean heavily on the running game. As Tim reported, Evanson Bernard will not play today. They brought him out three hours before the game, put him through some running experiments, and it just wasn't happening. They said, we're not going to risk it. He will be ready, though, for the bowl game. And there you see what they lose, over 1,000 yards rushing from him. The good news for the Oregon Ducks, Jonathan Stewart will play. He will start. He has that turf toe that's been bothering him for the last few weeks. But Coach Mike Bellotti told me moments ago he's about 85 percent and the key for him is that they make sure they keep him on the field so long drives today are good for the Ducks Dan thank you Todd Oregon has won the toss they have deferred kicking off the Beavers will get the ball deep for the Beavers this is Gerard Lawson Lawson out to the 25 yard line and the Beavers will start with excellent field position at about the 32 yard line quarterback as we've been talking about Lyle Moivau Kid that has turned into a great leader for Mike Riley and the Beavers. Plays with a lot of passion. This is his third start, but uh, last two games out. Victorious over Washington and Washington State. I think for both of these young quarterbacks, Dan, they just have to play within themselves. Not try to do too much. Mark the ball at the 33-yard line. Matt Severson is the tailback for Evanson Bernard. 
it's a fake to Severson. Moivau to throw on first down. A lot of times got it. Wheat Brown over open over the middle and Brown is knocked out of bounds. First down Beavers in duck territory. Now here's today's starting lineup presented by the Olive Garden and to introduce Oregon State starting offensive lineman. Yep that's the Heisman Trophy winning quarterback from 1962 Terry Baker. The Beavers quarterback is someone DeAndros would love Lyle Moivau. That running back is the pride of Bend Oregon Matt Severson. The receivers can all fly. Pendleton Oregon's Roy Schooning anchors the O line and this is his 49th consecutive start. Big Kobe. hole up the middle for Severson. He can go. Severson at the 10 touchdown Oregon State. Second play of the game. 38 yards for number 37. That start to this game. Six foot two, 220 pound senior, Civil War. Bang. How about his second touchdown of the year? Here it goes. And as soon as he gets here, this is what he sees. He says, Look at this. I got a hole any way I want to go. And then he just explodes through it. And look at the speed from the big guy for his second touchdown of the season. Alexis Cerna for the extra point, and it is perfect. Is yet to miss in 80 attempts. Great start for the Beavers, obviously, and we've got two classy Mikes patrolling the sidelines today. Mike Bellotti is the winningest coach in Oregon history, has seven wins in 12 games against the Beavers. Mike Riley on the other side, well, he's coached Oregon State for six years and has built a nationally respected program in the heart of the Valley. He's three and three against the Ducks, and he's a happy dude right now. Severson up from your neck of the woods, up in Bend, Oregon. What a way to start the Civil War. Longest rush of his career started out playing defense for the Beavers, filling in for Evanson Bernard. Two plays, 67 yard drive, just took 24 seconds off the clock. Bernard had his knee scoped, trimming up some cartilage, his right knee. They repaired a flap in there. It was causing irritation. Mike Riley told me before the game that it was a little bit swollen and that he wouldn't play. So Severson steps in, and what an answer to a problem. Oregon State has outscored their opponents 120 to 9 in the first quarter. 120 to 9. Reminds me of a 1972 Civil War game where the one of the first plays was a trap and went the distance. Donnie Reynolds against the Beavers in Parker Stadium back in the day. Andy L. Brown is back deep for the Ducks. This ball will bounce on the ground and this will be Patrick Chung. And it's a reverse to Derek Jones and he's got room. Flag is down as Jones hits midfield. Jones now at the 40 and knocked out of bounds, but a flag is down back at the 23 yard line. Usually that means a block in the back, but there were so many people right there, it was hard to see if anybody was blocking in the back or blocking in the front. It was a hole. Jack Foliart's our referee. Graduate of the University of Oregon Law School, calling holding. Special teams coach Tom Osborne pulling out all the stops holding today. When during the return, on the return team, number 35, 10 yard penalty, first down. You know, Tim, when you have a rivalry game, we've, we're seeing some fireworks right away. But when you have an offense that's struggling like Oregon's, you've got to try some trick plays everywhere. Yeah, Mike Bellotti called him the alumni plays. You know, he's going to bring him out. There's no reason not to in a game like this. Said he's even going to go for it on fourth down if he's got that opportunity later in this ball game. But Tom Osborne has to be upset. The play worked, and the hold brings it back. And redshirt freshman Cody Kemp from Beaverton's Westview High School will take his snap here. It's to Jonathan Stewart, and Stewart's got a good gain over that right side. Well, he led the Ducks in receiving yards in 1969, and then he led the team in rushing the next two seasons. To introduce Oregon starting offensive lineups, that's Bobby Moore, but he is now Ahmad Rashad. 
Beaverton, Oregon's Cody Kemp makes his start at quarterback. Grew up in Beaverton, did the right thing, went to Eugene to go to school at Oregon. He'll rely on Jonathan Stewart to carry the load. He needs just 38 yards to be the single season record holder. I used to be that a long time ago. Now up front, the offensive line has given up only 22 sacks. They're led by Jeff Schwartz. Go Ducks. Thank you, my friend. As Cody Kemp fires incomplete for Garrett Strong on second down and four. That's Dennis Dixon on the sidelines. Coach on the field. Holding penalty on the kickoff return. Reverse negated a 51 yard return. And he set up this third down and four. There's Stewart right side. He's going to get the first down. Dragging tacklers. Alan Darling gets a free ride. Well, he was 3 0 in his Oregon State career in Civil War games. Introduced the Beavers starting defensive lineups. Here's their quarterback from 60 to 62, Terry Baker. Penetration is what Tommy Prothrow preached, and the D line does just that, especially with Dorian Smith back in the starting lineup. The linebackers are as good as Amy, Darlin, Doggett, and LaRock. Al Afalava is OSU's hardest hitter. Go get him, Beavs. Thank you, Butch, as uh, Jonathan Stewart struggling for nine yards close to a first down, and they say he's 85 percent. Tim, I think he looks a little closer to 100 percent these last three runs. Yeah, there's no question. Emotion is now playing a role, and that adrenaline flow, I'm sure, has taken some of the pain away out of his toe. If you look at him, he cuts back, and then the best part of this play is at the end. Look at the yards after contact, and look at the way he continues to stay on his feet. Twist and turn and fight for extra yards. Only 33 yards last week against UCLA. Looks much better in this game, but again, that's emotion, that's adrenaline because of the Civil War. And the Beavers were twisting on his left foot. It's the right foot that he has problems with, turf toe on his right foot. Second down and one. Stewart's got another first down as he dances out to the 45 46 yard line ball came loose Oregon down on top of it but they're saying he was down by contact and there is no fumble now let's check in with Stan Verrett Stan how are you doing today all right Dan just great Les Miles says he's staying at LSU his team in a battle with Tennessee for the SEC title and Eric Ainge to Chris Brown for the touchdown Vowles got on the board first LSU's answer with a field goal about to line up for another one it's 7 3 right now in Atlanta. Thank you, Stan. First and 10 for the Ducks at the 46 yard line as Andre Crenshaw John joins Jonathan Stewart in the backfield. Kemp 0 for 1 passing. Max Unger with the snap. Three, four man rush now for the Beavs. Kemp over the middle. Diving try. And it's. They say it's a catch. A completed catch to Jeff Mayo. Fantastic catch. Jeffrey Mayo's the true freshman. Watch him lay out. We'll get another look and make sure his hands are under the ball. But I mean, he had to lay out completely to get this ball. I think it hit the ground, should be overturned. They're going to look at this thing. They look at every play. But look, the ball hits the ground, bounces up. That should be incomplete. It should come back. But Oregon fans would say, well, the ball bounced last week into the hands of Alteron Werner, and it was called an interception. That ball clearly hit the ground. Well, Jack replay. Foliard will go over to the headset. Get on the headset with Fred Gallagher, our replay official, up in the box. Definitely hit the ground, the nose of the ball popped back up into his chest. Great effort by Mayo, but that should be incomplete. More importantly, Jonathan Stewart, after that last run that he had, came up limping. Now, there's very few injuries that are as nagging and as painful as a turf toe. Very little you can do about it except rest. Well, we were with practice Thursday. We watched him go into the training room after he, his portion was done, and they worked on it, continued to work on it, massage it, stretch it, whatever they do to turf toes. Look at Chip Kelly, the offensive coordinator. He knows how much Jonathan Stewart means to this ball club, especially with all the injuries they've had. Dennis Dixon and Leaf. Jeremiah Johnson, Hayson, Cameron Cole. I mean, it's just been unheard of the injuries that they've had at key positions on this ball club this year. And the Beaver fans will say, well, what about us? We've had our share as well, and that is true. That is true. That is true. And, and most importantly, right now is their quarterback situation. And Canfield has a tear in his shoulder, and they say now he should be back for a bowl. So. 
here it is again. And you watch the nose of the ball bounce, and the ball bounces. That's Great. when he secures it. Fantastic camera work by our crew. This would, would have been a 28 yard reception. If it is overturned, remember, it was called a catch. If it's overturned, it will be second and 10 for Oregon back at their 46 yard line. Some of the odds and crazies. After review, the ruling on the field will be reversed. Incomplete pass. And that's a good job by the replay officials because they looked at it, they saw that it hit, they saw that it bounced, and it came up into his into his chest. So that's Please the way it should have been called. Heck of an effort by the young freshman from Paradise, California, Jeffrey Mail. They're still debating it there, but Mike Pilati still. He's still lobbying and asking for opinions as they watched it on the big screen. So it'll be second and ten from the 46 yard line for the Ducks. Jonathan Stewart is in the backfield. It's Cody Kemp. No huddle. Now they do huddle. Oregon's trying to keep the ball on the perimeter. They're trying to spread this Oregon State defense out. That front seven is very active. They don't want them loading the box. They want to spread them out. That's why they're using these reverses, getting on the corner. Now they'll probably use a quick pass or two on the outside. Here's Kemp. This is Stewart. And Stewart, it's about to midfield and then pushed back by the front seven of the Beavers. As good a front seven as you'll see. In fact, they use more than just seven guys. They Substitute freely along the defensive line and the linebackers. You know, Dan, this is a different Oregon team without Dixon. Here's the situation. I mean, when Dennis Dixon is in there, he orchestrates this offense like a, a maestro, and it just generates a lot of yardage, a lot of touchdowns, a lot of production. But look, since he's gone out, look what's happened. One offensive touchdown, seven turnovers, 38% completion. I mean, it's just not a good situation under two yards per rush. Third and six. Crenshaw in the backfield. Here's a quick pass outside. Almost intercepted. Almost picked off by Joey LaRock. And if he did pick it off, he'd be dancing in the end zone now. So another rough start for Cody Kemp. Now 0 for 3. And that third one could have been disastrous. Yeah, and that was inexperienced, Dan. Watch how he locks on the receiver, looks there the whole time, and with his eyes brings uh, LaRock over right to the, to the ball. LaRock was just reading his eyes, just playing the zone, got in his hook area, and went where Kemp took him. This is Josh Irie, had a school record 12 punts last week against the Bruins, running to Taylor Cavanaugh. And that ball will die inside the five at the three yard line. Josh Syrie, 47 yards to the three. Beavers backed up when we come back. TV. Beavers needed just two plays to get on the scoreboard last time they had the ball to start the ball game. Moy Val with a 29 yard pass completion. Anthony Brown and then Matt Severson took it in from 38 yards away, but now they're on their own three in front of the Oregon student, student section. Severson up the middle. Good gain out to the 10 yard line. Now well, he's the only player in Pac 8 history to lead the Pac 8 in scoring from two different positions. To introduce the Ducks' starting defensive lineups, here is ex running back and wide receiver Ahmad Rashad. The defensive line is led by Nick Reed and his 12 sacks. At linebacker, Captain A.J. Tuatelli returns from a broken foot. And the strength of the Duck defense is in the secondary. Corners Thurman and Bird, safeties Chung and Harper. They have 13 interceptions. Go Ducks. Thank you, my friend. Second down and three. Again, Severson, and he's close to a first down. He may have it. Six foot two, 212 pounds with good power off that left side. Yeah, and they're going to get a heavy dose of Severson in this drive. He's gotten them away from the goal line. He's given them a little run, uh, room to operate. Boy, Val, though, he's got that strong arm, and he's confident. He's almost cocky down there. He carries that quarterback arrogance with him. He's not afraid to throw, and I don't think Mike Riley's afraid to let him throw. But they're not going to have many check with me at the lines. He's not going to change in and out of plays because of the noise in the stadium. First and ten, Beavers. 
Here's Severson again left side blockers out in front and he'll get out of bounds after a pickup of about four Nick Reed first to meet him on the sideline well, on that last drive which was their first drive it took two plays mobile came out and he just started firing right away and then Severson took it right up the middle there was nobody home the defense had separated they had cleared out the middle was open he read it he reacted Severson takes it the distance and that's the only score in the ball game so far seven nothing Oregon State well, they attacked the middle of the Oregon defense for Remember, John Bacon is out with a bad injury, a knee injury. Casey Matthews down with a shoulder. So Kwaji Ajman, Kwame Ajman moves in at middle linebacker. A.J. Tuatelli at weak linebacker. That's a good point. They're all safeties playing linebacker. Here's Moidau. He's going to throw deep. Got a wide open receiver. Powers Brandon all. Powers all the way out to the 45 yard line. Check in with Stan Verrett. Stan? All right, Dan, this Taco Bell studio update takes us to the ACC title game. Virginia Tech and Boston College. Tech up seven. Matt Ryan has the ball tipped. Xavier Adibi picks it off, and he takes it back for the touchdown. So no fourth quarter comeback for Ryan this time. Virginia Tech possibly headed to the Orange Bowl as ACC checks. Thank you, Stan. Check out the hit, huh, Tim? Yeah, you know, I thought the offensive line did a great job holding him until the very end. And that's the kind of hit they want to get on it. Not so much it's sacks are fine, but they want to hit him every time they can. That was Jeremy Gibbs obliging. And Severson goes down at the line of scrimmage. Best defensive play of the afternoon for Oregon. You know, we talked to, about Boy Val, and I'm thinking about that hit. And, and the coaches say he's naturally fast, he's mobile, and he's tough, but he's not very big. He's only 5'11, 220 pounds. He is thick. And sometimes they say he's hard headed, but I will tell you this. The part that sticks out to me is when they say he's tough because he does take some hits. He will level some blocks. He does get involved in plays. And he, look at that. That's your quarterback. That's the kind of kid you're playing with. And that's why the, the players around him are excited to have him at quarterback today. And give credit for Grayson Gunheim receiving that blow from the quarterback. Here's Severson. And he'll get a couple before he's tackled by Jerome Boyd. And what happens though is when the defense starts knocking to the ground like that, the quarterback has a tendency, regardless how tough he is, to put his head on a swivel, to start worrying about where they're coming from. And that takes his focus off the receiver. And that's what Oregon's trying to get right now with their pressure. And in talking to Danny Langsdorf, quarterback coach for the Beavers, he says that Moivau does not blink. And that's a quality you want in your quarterback when they've got those big defensive linemen breathing down their necks. Third and six for Moivau. Out of the gun. Quarterback draw and Moivau's got room. First down, 40 yard line, fumble. Ball is loose and it appears Oregon's got it. They do. And that's all on Moivau trying to be a tough guy. Instead of just sliding and taking the first, he tried to put his shoulder down and deliver a blow to show how tough he was. And when he did it, the ball came loose. Matthew Harper with the hit and A.J. Tuatelli, team captain with the recovery. Watch this, Dan. I mean, it's wide open. He's got the first down. Now slide, but instead he tries to put that shoulder down and try to show him, hey, listen, I'm a tough quarterback. And by doing that, the ball was knocked loose. Not a smart play by an inexperienced quarterback with Val. And a perfect tackle by Matthew Harper. His helmet came right on the ball right there, popped it loose. Those are two of the best safeties in the Pac-10, Chung and Harper. And they're the two leading tacklers. So Oregon ball, first and ten at the 37. Here's Stewart right side. He's got a big hole. Midfield, 45 into Beaver territory. Dragged down by Jeff Van Orso. 19 yards for Jonathan Stewart. Here it is from the end zone and watch Jonathan Stewart. He stops and he'll cut back against that zone blocking and there's like a wall. And once he's into the secondary, unlike a lot of guys who try to cut to the sideline, he just heads right for the goal line. Very explosive guy, but the best thing is his patience to watch that hole in the cutback lane. And that gives Jonathan Stewart the single season rushing record. 1,559 yards and more. You know, one thing that, that Jonathan Stewart told us is that he's more patient this year. He waits for his blockers. He says, be quick, but don't rush. 
And even though the turf toe has been unbearable, look at the numbers that he's kind of put up in the school record you talked about. But every time he touches the ball, he gets at least six yards. He got three that time, Tim, and here's a fake to Stewart. Here's Kemp now. And he's not going to get back to the line of scrimmage. Good discipline on that defensive line by Curtis Coker and Derek Doggett. Yeah, but again, that's that's on Kemp. He's got to be more aware of what's going on around him. He can't take the losses. He can't lose yardage. No negative plays. That's one of their goals coming into this ball game. Oregon 44 percent converting third downs but a lot of that of course before Dennis Dixon went down against Arizona a couple weeks back. Stewart in the backfield on third and eight and he's got it and he's not going to get back to the line of scrimmage. And Dorian Smith Tim the senior from Van Nuys with a good play and there is one of the big indicators that with Dixon out Dixon would never run that ball there. That'd be a pass for Dixon. But for Kemp. It's not. He runs the play action, but he gives it to Stewart. Taylor Josh Syree comes in for Oregon, looking to pin the Beavers deep in their own end of the field one more time. Ball bounces at the five, inside the five, and it will be down at about the three yard line again. 6.05 to go, first quarter. Oregon State seven, Oregon nothing. Great rivalry. Oregon's 155, Oregon State 45. There have been 10 ties. And the Beavers are backed up in the I formation is Clinton Pope, the senior from Phoenix, in the end zone. He's got it left side, trying to get out of his own end zone, and he'll lose a yard. Kevin Garrett, one of the tacklers, along with Nick Reed. Well, that's a dangerous play down on that goal line when you're backed up. To be horsing around in that end zone to look for a hole is extremely dangerous. Just last time they had Severson hit the line quickly on a quick opener, and that's normally what you do down there. And look at the Oregon's defense. That's what you don't want down here is to give up a safety to get one of those TFLs. Tackles for loss like that one. Second down and 11. Brown in motion resets. Moyval out of his end zone throwing deep and throwing it away. Great coverage by Walter Thurman on Chris Johnson. You know it's just about this time in one of these games Dan and you've played in it played in it several times is that right about now is when the emotion starts to wear off the game starts to become a reality. Now you go back to what you've been practicing all week you go back to the game plan and you start to get focused on what's taking place. Now the emotions are just gone and you play football. Sometimes emotion gets in the way of concentration anyway. Yeah, it's been a great start for the Beavers offensive line but you get a sense now that Oregon's defensive line is picking up the pace. You have a feel for what they're doing now you adjust to it. Third and 11 from the two yard line. Moy to a throw trying to set up the screen outside to Rogers and it's not going anywhere but out of bounds Patrick Chung with the tackle there on the speedy James Rogers. Yeah and there's there's the ball hawk of this defense. He's their leading tackler Patrick Chung. He's six feet 210 pounds and he comes at you with bad intentions but the best thing he does is he reads reacts gets there and now watch no fooling around he wraps and takes to the ground Patrick Chung's big time. Was that close enough for you in the camera shot beautiful pictures felt like I got an assist. Cerna with a short punt. Barely across the 30 yard line. <laughs> 30 yard punt by Alexis Cerna. So Tim the, the Ducks have had great field position in this game. They were struck first and fast. And, and this is one of those situations where I think that now Cody Kemp has to get comfortable. He's got to feel confident with the guys around him. He's got to take advantage of this field position. Oregon needs points, and they need that success to help him build confidence. Right now, he's 0 for 3. And one completion reversed by the replay booth, which was an excellent call. 
Here's Stewart right side. And Stewart gets to the 30 yard line and then is bounced out of bounds. Derek Doggett. You know, last week when we did the Oregon UCLA game, it was the first time I think I've seen a game at this level where six different guys took snaps in that ball game. UCLA had two, but Oregon had four different players take snaps. And it was just one of those games where they couldn't get anything going. It was total ineptness offensively. And Mike Bellotti's been working on that all week, and that's why he's sticking with Kemp right now and trying to get the offense going. There's the fake to Stewart. Kemp in trouble. Now he'll run and he'll get blasted. Alan Darling with the big hit. Welcome to the Civil War, youngster. Oh, he felt every bit of that. Look at him. He's he's I think it, it's still vibrating through his toes. Play action. Now this is Dixon like, but now he tucks it away, feels the pressure, and doesn't wait in the pocket. He's lucky he didn't fumble that ball the way he was hit. And I'm sure that Dennis Dixon will tell him along the sidelines, you can't be taking that type of hit. You know, Unger, Max Unger was saying take a timeout because he's not right. Kemp is not right. He took a couple of big shots last week. In fact, was knocked out of the game by Bruce Davis. In the UCLA game. They'll check on Cody Kemp. This is Justin Roper, just in case. Nineteen ninety four. Oregon needed a win in Corvallis to get to the Rose Bowl. Now we trailed late in the fourth quarter when quarterback Danny O'Neill in his last regular season game threw the game winning touchdown. We were smelling roses for the first time since nineteen fifty eight. Quarterback for Oregon is number 11 Justin Roper was two of six last week against the Bruins for 18 yards and an interception. And he faces a third down and seven. And he's fired got a wide open receiver. Touchdown Oregon. Jeffrey Mail. From Justin Roper, a redshirt freshman from Buford, Georgia, to Jeffrey Mail, a true freshman from Paradise. Matt Evenson ties the ball game. Come knock on my door, Mr. Roper. Beaver seven, Duck seven. It's the Civil War. The world within our oceans is one we're only beginning to understand. New technology allows us to study and explore the sea like never before. What could be more exciting than that? I get inspired taking what I learn in the classroom and then working with my team to engineer real world solutions. Building a champion mini Baja is a lesson that will stay with us for life. These are our stories. Oregon State University. First touchdown pass of his young career, Justin Roper. 31 yard strike to Jeffrey Mail has tied this 111th edition of the Civil War. How about going to the bullpen like that and bringing out Roper, who's six foot six and can see the field a little bit better than can Kemp, and just threw a strike for that touchdown. Yeah, who plays quarterback for Oregon next time they get the ball? It appears that uh, Cody Kemp is okay on the sidelines as Evenson kicks it deep. Bernard Lawson at the 12 yard line, reversing his field. Got room to the left side. Across the 30 yard line, still going. Good return by Gerard Lawson. Well, tonight on ESPN at 7.45 Eastern, Pat White, Steve Slayton, and the West Virginia Mountaineers hope to lock up a spot in the BCS championship game. They'll host Pittsburgh in the backyard brawl. And at 8 Eastern on ESPN 2, 
Arizona State looks to secure a spot in the Fiesta Bowl if they can get by the Arizona Wildcats. College football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels at 745 Eastern on ESPN and college football primetime presented by GoDaddy.com 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN 2. That's the 100th backyard brawl but it's never meant as much as it does tonight. Beaver ball first and 10. Quick pass out here to Brandon Powers and Powers knocked off his feet after a short game. Now the 2007 season for the Beavers didn't start off all that great. They lost three of their first five games including a 40 to 14 loss at home to UCLA. And two weeks later came their biggest win when they beat number two ranked California on the road. And back on the road three weeks later they lost to SC 24 to 3 and they lost their quarterback but since then they won their last two games against both the Washington schools and are looking to end their regular season on a three game winning streak. Yeah they won five of the last six and that UCLA game I think was a turning point. They had that game won defensively but they turned the ball over and gave it to the Bruins and Mike Riley and the Beavers are going to call their first time out of the first half. Three fifteen to go first quarter. All tied in Eugene. Back in Eugene, where our score is 7 7. He was just called their first time out. Al Moivau, three of four for 57 yards. He's facing a second down and eight now from the 36 yard line of Oregon State. Clinton Polk is the tailback. He's got it right up the middle. And he's across the 40 yard line. Good game for Clinton Polk. Todd Harris. Well, Dan, just to update you on Cody Kemp. I talked with head athletic trainer Kevin Style moments ago. He, the doctor, Dennis Dixon, everyone, the first thing they said to Cody was, don't hit the middle linebacker with your head. Get down. They're going to hold him out. They said he was a little bit fuzzy. So good news for Jack Tripper. Mr. Roper will be back for the next series. Thank you, Todd. That's, that's good advice. You never want to hit the middle linebacker. You never want to get hit by him either. Third and three for the Beavs. Boy, vow to throw. He's got a completion. The catching's out to midfield. First down, Oregon State. You know, you talk about quarterbacks taking on the linebacker or taking on the defensive back. We've seen both guys do it, and neither one has won. Boy, Val fumbled when he rolled his shoulder and tried to take on the safety, and then Kemp, he's still out of the ball game because he tried to take on a linebacker. It just doesn't make sense. You're more valuable to your team just to get down and continue to play. Yeah, neither of these guys have to prove their toughness. To stay in the lineup. Polk the tailback. Rodgers in motion. And Rodgers will get it on the reverse. And Oregon's waiting for him. And knock him out of bounds for a couple yard loss. Kwame Ajaman from his middle linebacker spot. Of course, James Rogers, number eight. We're going to see him a lot today. He averages 12 yards a run. They want to get the ball to him as much as possible, as many ways as possible. So here they bring him around on the reverse. He's also an excellent receiver. Watch the end of this play, though. He really gets tattooed on the sideline and sitting back there by the trunk by the time he ends up. Talking to defensive coordinator Nick Aliotti about Rogers. He says he's a lot like that other guy named Rogers from about 40 years ago, Johnny Rogers. Very fast. He lost three on that first down play. Rogers in motion again, fake to Rogers. Boy, got hit as he throws, and it's almost caught. What a throw by Moyval. We have a flag down. Yeah, this is going to be unsportsmanlike. Nick Reed putting the pressure on Lyle Moyval. Boy, Mike Riley is furious. He's down in midfield. Now he's calling his team over, but he was given the, the linesman a what for down there. And that's when he threw the flag. Had a great conversation with Mike this morning. You know, he's just an even, even keeled guy, never gets too high, too low. Just an outstanding coach. The players love him. Personal foul call against the Oregon Ducks. After the play, personal foul on the defense, number 34. Blow to the head. 15 yards, automatic, first down. And that's the unsportsman like that got Mike Riley so fired up, and he kind of lobbied for that penalty. This is actually away from the ball. The ball was thrown down by the 35. The penalty took place up near midfield in front of the bench. And here's the hit on 
Moy Val. So they continue to get him and take him to the ground. Here's the incompletion. And then the top left of your screen, you see those feet. That's where the, the blow to the head took place. Brandon Powers slapping his hands together, saying, he let one get away. Great throw by Moy Val under pressure. And he'll throw again. And he's got a wide open tight end. Gabe Miller. And Gabe Miller takes it all the way down inside the 10 yard line wide open for 30 yards they let him off the line free too they didn't even chip at him just let him release here he is to the left of your screen and now he just kind of finds his way down the seam and the ball's waiting for him Harper was late getting over here's that penalty now watch the shot to the head right here and it took place right in front of coach Riley. So it's first and goal for the Beavers at the eight yard line. Rogers in motion. Fake to Polk. Here's Rogers open at the five. Rogers down to the one. And they'll mark it just shy of the goal line. Ajman and Harper on the tackle. Boy, he was wide open. Had Malval led him. Boy, Val would have hit him while he was still in stride. It would have been a touchdown, but he threw underneath and he made him stop and come back into the pursuit. And you're really seeing the effects of the bye week for Oregon State. Their, their offense is really clicking. Great timing, very imaginative play calls. And this is a team that's been on a roll. They're playing with a lot of confidence right now. Andy Stewart is the fullback. Clinton Polk the tailback. Second and goal from the one. Polk left side. And Polk. Is in the end zone. Touchdown, Oregon State. It's one of those deals I didn't think he was going to get in, and it's almost as if the tackler threw him into the end zone. Watch the end of this play because he was stopped at the one. He's hit there, and now watch. They throw him into the end zone while they're tackling him. Great leg drive by Polk pulling Kevin Garrett into that end zone, Tim. Zerna, Zerna the Groza winner back in 05 with an extra point is perfect. Six foot two, 215 pound senior from Phoenix, Arizona, Clinton Polk, with his third touchdown of the season, gives the Beavers a seven point lead as we come to the end of the first quarter. Strong scoring drive for the Beavs. And I think the thing that jumps out at it is what you were talking about. The, the bye week is evident and their confidence is evident. They've won five of their last six games and they are really playing crisp offensive football. Now well, let's take another trip down memory lane. The 1998 Civil War. If you like offense, how about 85 combined points? Oregon's Akili Smith did throw for over 400 yards in the game, but we had the weapons to keep up. Ken Simonton had four rushing touchdowns, a 44-41 double overtime win for the Beavers. Well, you think about Oregon State. They've had some great running backs. Ken Simonton there he ran for over 5,000 yards. Stephen Jackson ran for almost 4,000 yards. The Beavers have had some guys that can carry that ball. And the two guys filling in for the great Evanson Bernard today doing a good job. Severson and Polk. Here's Patrick Chung. Fumble. And Chung has got the recovery. Ball was ripped out of his hand as it looked like he had some running room. Here's the end of the play again. The ball was on the inside rather than the outside where it was available for the tacklers. Chung, of course, filling in, returning kickoffs for Jonathan Stewart and Andre Crenshaw. Both those two running backs are being saved for running back duties instead of returning kickoffs. You know, it's going to be interesting now to watch Justin Roper. Now, the first first play he came in he threw a touchdown pass but he didn't really have much time to think about coming in the ball game because that's when Kemp was hurt and just left now he's had that last possession by Oregon State to think about it let's see how he reacts first and 10 from the 27 yard line for Oregon Stewart in the backfield to the right side of Roper now he shifts to the left side play clock running down Stewart's got it for about one yard 
Well, it was senior day here at the University of Oregon, Autzen Stadium. Check out the reaction for Dennis Dixon. The senior from San Leandro still helping out on the sidelines with that bum knee. Fumble by Roper, and he gets down on top of it. This is exactly what happened last week against UCLA. And this is what we were just talking about. He's had now a whole possession to think about coming into the ball game and playing the rest of the way. First play, he was fighting the play clock, got a late handoff off the Stewart. This time he puts the ball in the ground. So now the offense is not nearly as crisp as the first quarter comes to an end. The Beavers 14, the Ducks 7. We'll be back with more from the Civil War after this. Join ESPN and the V Foundation in the fight against cancer. Call 1 800 4 Jimmy V or log on to www.jimmyv.org and donate. Do it now. Third and 15 for Roper. And that ball is intercepted off the hands of Dixon. This is Doggett. Doggett inside the five. Doggett to the end zone. Touchdown, Beavers. Take another look at this. Doggett's fourth interception of the year. He's an active linebacker. Again, he's reading the eyes of the quarterback. And Roper leads him right there. Then the tip drill. Oh, my. Just picks it off, shows his ability to take it down the sidelines. Big, strong guy at 6'3", 210. Not even involved in the breakup itself. Just in the deflection, the tip drill, and the touchdown. Ed Dixon. With another drop pass, dropped two last week against UCLA. This one cost the Ducks seven points as Cerna adds the PAT. Derek Doggett, eighth career interception, the senior from San Diego's University High School, the former safety, taking it to the Hacienda. And give a lot of credit to Afalava. Afalava jumps the route, tips it, and there's Doggett to get the tip. I asked him what he likes about playing linebacker when we talked to him this week. He said succinctly, hitting, loves to hit. Well, he'll love that pick, too. And Dixon went right to work on Roper, telling him what he did and what he didn't do. Telling him to look off the receiver. Tell him, don't throw into coverage like that, especially when a guy's jumping your route. But the ball hit the receiver right in the hands. Huh? That was a pretty good saying ball he, by Roper. Saying he needs a little help. <laughs> I'd say, keep doing what you're doing. Keep hitting him in the hands. They're going to catch him. Sooner or later. Boy, that has been a problem, though, with Oregon. It's been a situation where they've been tipping the balls, they aren't catching the balls, specifically Jason Williams. But they had nine drop balls last week against UCLA. Jason Williams did not start today, and yet we've yet to see him in the lineup. They need his production along with Ed Dixon, especially when you consider Paysinger and Colvin are out with injuries. Walter Thurman with the return out to about the 26 yard line. Just underway here in the second quarter with national title hopes on the line. Heisman contender Chase Daniel and the number one ranked Missouri Tigers look to cement a spot in the BCS championship game as they face Sam Bradford and Oklahoma. It's the Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship part of Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. Oklahoma versus Missouri tonight. 8 Eastern on ABC and ABC HD. 21 7 Beavers over the Ducks. And Stewart dragged down for a loss. Naaman Frank. You know, the coaching staffs from both schools could throw out the scattering reports from early in the year. Forget those game films because they mean nothing. These are different teams now. But the front seven of Oregon State has remained. Pretty much intact. And Naaman Frank, the senior from Honolulu, with a good penetration and a good play here. So a big loss of five yards on that play as Stewart remains the tailback with Roper. And he's got it up the middle and he's met by Doggett. Derek Doggett filling the hole quickly. 
Dodd, you got more on Dennis Dixon? Yeah, Dan, we've talked about how important he is to this team and what they're losing. Last week against UCLA, the Ducks were only able to generate 148 yards without Dennis Dixon, a quarterback. Now, that's 35 yards fewer than they had against Arizona when he was in there for only nine minutes. But at practice the other day, you know, he still can run like a gazelle, albeit straight ahead. He throws a beautiful ball, and Coach Bellotti watched it for a while, and they said, you know what, I can't take any more. He said, Dennis, can you just stop because you're depressing me? Well, here's Stewart left side on a third down and 12, not getting anywhere near a first down out to the 30 yard line. Tim Clark with the tackle there. And this will bring out Josh Syrie and the punting team. Yeah, that really was weird at practice the other day watching Dennis Dixon. And you and I and Todd, we stood there, we talked to the coaches. Just looks 100% healthy. It's hard to believe that he's got a torn ACL because he moves so well and still throws the ball. You can almost count the revolutions. Here's Syrie with a low. Line drive punt Kavanaugh all the way to the 29 yard line and he's hemmed in there by Oregon gets across the 35 yard line and then out of bounds. 12:47 to go in the first half. Beavers on top by 14. The 1983 Civil War game, also known as the Toilet Bowl. Now, why was it called that? Well, the name sort of described the play. The game ended 0 0. It was the last scoreless tie in college football. Even though I tried it hard, it's a Civil War game that will never be forgotten. That is for sure. First and 10 for the Beavers with excellent field position. Severson with another big hole dives out for another Beaver first down. Well, Nick Aliotti's got his hands full this afternoon with his Beaver offense. Communicate, tackle, wrap up, run to the ball. Hey, man, Chris, keep him going, Coach. Keep him going. Good luck today, Kevin. Good focus. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. Go, David. Yes, sir. Let's go, Nick. You got a couple snacks in you? Pre-game pep talk by the defensive coordinator. Severson was just short of the first down, but he's not now as he gets out to midfield. Well, we had a long talk with Aliotti yesterday, and he's really down in the dumps about all the injuries they've had. As a matter of fact, before the start of this game, their defense had given up only one running touchdown in the last six games, 30 possessions. And I mean, so the defense have been playing very, very well despite the fact that they too have had injuries. But Nick Aliotti was down in the dumps. It's just not the same team they started the season with, not the same team that they were running. Running that race toward a national championship, it looked like until midseason. 49 yard line of Oregon State is where this ball will be snapped from. And Severson's got it. And another big hole right up the middle. Another first down. He's tripped up, or he would have had at least another 10 yards. Cole Linehan tripped him up. And they're making it look too easy. The offensive line's opening holes. The running backs have great vision. The offense is crisp, and the defense is not responding. Watch the. The white jerseys, watch the hole, and then look at Severson bounce up in there and get into the second level. And if he does that and gets that 220 pounds going with momentum, he's tough to bring down. Evanson Bernard did not suit up for this one. His surgically repaired right knee, not in good enough shape to play, but uh, Severson has 83 yards on just nine carries and a touchdown. Moyval, another wide open receiver, but Powers can't hang on. In front of Matthew Harper. And Powers having trouble hanging on to the ball today. Powers was wide open, but you could see his head turn just before the ball got there. He was looking to see where the defender was, took his eye off the ball game, ball, and just let it get. Now watch his head. Here comes the ball. Now look, turns his head to see where he's going and where the defender is, and at one split second he loses it. So catchings and Brown are the wide receivers at the top of the screen for the Beavers as Powers goes to the bench. Here's Severson and he'll get a couple and keep going dragging yellow helmets with him. I think those are yellow helmets. But well, right now there's no question who has the advantage here. And you look at the white jerseys again, step them up, but then look at Severson on his own, just keep pushing, pushing, and there's not enough guys there. 
they got to get more guys around the ball. They've got to get somebody to grab cloth, and then they need pursuit of five and six guys to start making these tackles because right now, Oregon State is just manhandling the Ducks. Levitri and Spear that time aiding Severson for seven yards. He's got it left side. And he's across the 30, and Matt Severson continues to overpower Oregon. First down, Oregon State. Well, after that first run, we said that they were going to give him a heavy dose of Severson, and they certainly are. They continue to move the chains, and that will be their game plan now the rest of the way, unless something happens to make them change. But, I mean, it just looks like they're having their way up front. The offensive line is dominating. Severson's running hard, and, and Moy Val doesn't have to make any big decisions where he could get them into trouble and turn the ball over. Severson two yards shy of the century mark with 10 minutes to go still in the first half. 23 yard line for Oregon State. And Severson will get maybe one. You know OSU is not close to the passing team that they've been in the past. It's a team that has had trouble finding an identity all year. And I think they may be finding that identity right here against the Ducks. Load them up and the rules of the game are straight ahead. No fair dodging. Now getting Jeremy Perry back on the offensive line is a huge boost because that moves Spear over to right guard. And they got their big studs. There is Perry up front. Perry had that broken fibula. Severson got one second down and nine as Rogers goes in motion and he's got it. Blocker out in front but good. Team defense by Oregon pushes him out of bounds. Matthew Harper, among others. Rogers is fun to watch. Little itty bitty guy. He's only 5'6 and a half, 5'7, 181 pounds, freshman. But he does so many things for this offense that they're still looking for ways to get him the ball more often. I was asking on the phone, is he going to take any direct snaps like McFadden did down in Arkansas? Like more, more and more teams are going to, and they said no. They said it's a pretty good idea. Well, with Bernard out of the game, Rodgers is the Beavers' leading rusher. Third and three. Fake to Severson. Moivau to the end zone. Touchdown, Oregon State. John Reese with the catch. Now they're waving it off. Yeah, they're saying he was bobbling it and didn't have possession and lost it as soon as he hit the ground. Jarris Bird on the coverage. We'll take another look at this one. He was open and the ball was well thrown. And there's Reese. Looks like he's got it on his hip. Gets in the end zone. That's when it comes loose. So yeah, I think they're going to have to review, review this. this one. Absolutely. That's a touchdown, folks. I think so too. That ball's locked on his hip when his knee hits and he crosses the end zone. Crosses the goal line rather. And once he crosses the goal line, doesn't matter. Not only does he have it locked in right there on his hip, but he all had he both hands are on it and the defender's arm is in there and he still has it with both hands. He breaks the plane there. Easy call for a touchdown. And here comes the review. Mike Riley out on the field almost begging for the officials to stop the game. In fact, they've called a timeout. 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 Oregon, State, Oregon State number two. Number two. 9.26 to go, first half. We'll be back. Well, Reese has had that touchdown waved off, Dan. And it has to complete the catch. This is the word from upstairs all the way to the ground. I don't care what they said. That's a touchdown. Here is Cerna, and it's wide right for Alexis Cerna. His 100th field goal try in his great Oregon State career is wide right. So the Beavers don't get seven, they don't get three, but they still lead by 14. Two years ago when we played them in Eugene in the fall, touchdown pass to Jason Wynn is about 65 yards. Taking them at the kickoff return against them in the fog ball. It was just cool just to just hear the crowd even though you can't really see them.
Civil War two years ago that nobody saw. Here's Jonathan Stewart left side. And he'll get a couple before he's pushed out of bounds. Jonathan Stewart. Take another look at that uh, incomplete pass, Tim. Well, they're still talking about it in the stands, obviously. I mean, here's the catch, tucks it away, has both hands on it, knee goes down, butt hits, now the ball comes loose. Ruled no catch, said he didn't complete the catch. They line it up for a field goal, misses that, so that's a big turning point here. Don't get seven, as you said, don't get three, and now the Ducks have the ball. And Cerna had made 24 of his last 29 field goals. That was a chip shot for Cerna. Here's Roper left side first down Oregon and out of bounds. Justin Roper the loper going for 13 big ones. Looked a little bit like Dennis Dixon that time with the big long strides as you said the loper. Here's the fake pulls it back. Now they want him to give that ball every chance he can but it's a good read on his part because they had sucked in they didn't expect him to read they're not respecting his run and so he takes it outside he sees the contain man there got sucked in. That's a good play big time play by Roper out to the 34 yard line and a first down for Oregon. Here's Stewart bouncing to the outside and picking up a couple. Dragged out of bounds by Brandon Hughes and he's not getting up. Hughes and wrestled him to the ground well outside the playing field. Yeah and the fans wanted a flag none thrown but. I mean you could tell that definitely had an effect on Jonathan Stewart. Here's the end of the play. They're out of bounds. Let him go. Whistles blowing. And then they take him down. Actually tried to pull away at the last second, but his foot got caught underneath. And remember, it's his right foot, and that was the one that was caught underneath. Picked up one. Here's Crenshaw. Crenshaw. And he gets dragged down by Joey LaRock after two-yard gain. Time now to check in with Stan Vrett. Stan? All right, Dan, UCLA and USC, Trojans already up 7-0 when Chauncey Washington punches it in from 10 yards away. USC looking for a sixth straight Pac-10 title. That's never been done before, and the Trojans up 14-0. And LSU trailing Tennessee 7-6 at the half. Eric Ains with a touchdown pass to Chris Brown, and Colt David with a couple of field goals for the Tigers. Thank you, Stan. Bottom of the screen is Jason Williams for Justin Roper. He looks the other way, though, and throws incomplete. Aaron Strong, the intended receiver, and the ball thrown too soon by Roper. Still thinking of that UCLA USC game. USC seems to have it really going again. UCLA, one of the strangest scenarios of all time. If they win and get some help from Arizona State, could still go to the Rose Bowl. If they lose, they may not go to any bowl. Now, if USC wins that game, that'll be their sixth straight Pac 10 title. Unprecedented. Here's Kavanaugh waving for a fair catch. Can't make the catch, but the ball rolls out of bound harmlessly. It'll be Beaver Ball leading by 14 with 8.10 to go in the first half. You know the cool thing about having an O for a symbol? You learn to see endless potential everywhere you go. The University of Oregon. IBM presents the 25 greatest players ever. Number four, Doak Walker. Even though he was under six feet tall, Walker played like one of the biggest men on the field. The 1948 Heisman winner was a three-time consensus All-American and a two-time Cotton Bowl MVP. IBM getting it done. Luke Walker led SMU to their first Cotton Bowl victory in 1949 over the Norm Van Brocklin led Oregon Ducks. There's Moivau. A lot of time to throw. Throws incomplete over the middle. Trying to squeeze it in to Anthony Brown. Here are the 25 greatest players. Great series by IBM. Doak Walker, fourth greatest one. And he's playing a golf tournament hosted by Doak and Vern Lundquist in Steamboat Springs. Great times. Oh, Doak bet. Walker and walking through his house looking at the coffee table and seeing 
The Heisman Trophy holding down the Sunday paper. I bet there are some stories told in that, that yes. golf game. Yes, there were, my friend. Great man. Great player. Second and ten for the Beavers. This is Polk. And Polk barely gets back to the line of scrimmage before Thurman wraps him up. Strange game. Neither quarterback red hot. Malvo just six of 11, but for the Ducks, between their two quarterbacks, just one completion, and that was the 31 yard touchdown to Mayo. The crowd finally trying to get back into this one. The Beavers done a great job at taking this sellout crowd out of their game along with the Ducks. Moyval pressure and he throws the ball away. Will to Kwafu with the big hit on the quarterback and came, a big smile came with a blitz to Kwafu came through free. Nobody picked him up. They had more guys in the Oregon State could block and that's a pretty good tattoo. We've seen him now go down hard about two or three times. You just wonder when it's really going to start to take its toll on well, Moval. Pretty good coverage out of that zone. Here's Cerna punting the ball away to Oregon. It's picked up on a fly by Bird and knocked away. Oregon State is on it. Now it's still loose. Jarris Bird with a real risky play. Tried to pick that ball up on one bounce and got drilled, but Oregon has recovered. T.J. Ward with the recovery, the big hit by Gerard Lawson on Bird. Yeah, one of the don'ts of the kicking game. Don't want that ball to hit the ground, and when a guy's coming that hard, you've got to call that fair catch and protect yourself. He knew he was running into coverage, and coverage was coming hard. Right here, he knows he's going to get hit. You call that fair catch, they can't touch you. The ball comes down, they're lucky to get it back. Those pictures show you the intensity of these young men going after that loose ball. Two guys hit at full speed. It's like a car accident. Without the car. Without the car, right. Certainly without the seatbelts. So Ducks ball with good field position at the 43 yard line. Stewart. And Stewart just doesn't look right now. He did not have any power after he tried to cut. Looked like a good hole on the right side, but just could not get through it. Yeah, and since the first possession, they really don't look like they have that confidence in that Christmas. Offensive line is firing off, but there's, you know, there's just no bounce in his step. You see, Stewart. You know the toe is hurting him. He can't cut as sharply or as fast as he used to. Almost looked in slow motion on that play. Jason Williams is the wide receiver at the bottom of the screen for Oregon. Here's Roper. And Roper will get to the 45 yard line, pick up two yards, and then get pushed out of bounds by Derek Doggett. It's another one of those snaps that he bobbled. I mean, they're just out of sync right now. They're just not in the flow of the game. But he's in a throwing situation now, so he's got to complete a pass. They've got great field position. They're down 21 to 7. He's got 626 to play in the first half. They need something positive to happen, not only for them, for the crowd, the whole the whole atmosphere. This is where the Beavers will bring pressure on third down and eight, knowing the Ducks have to throw. And Roper will. To Williams, too high, incomplete. Williams went up with one hand. Daniel Drayton with the hit. Everything right now is for the Beavers. Everything right now, they're bouncing around, they're hitting, they're out hitting the Ducks. They feel very confident. And if you watch this, Jason Williams goes up and will shorthand it because he knows he's going to get hit. Actually, he went up pretty good for that football. He was just way overthrown, but he knew he was going to get hit. They're flying around, and everything right now is Oregon State's way. Josh Syrie with another punt. David Kavanaugh at the 20 yard line, and he gets hit right away. And he gets pushed back. Talmadge Jackson, first man to hit Kavanaugh. Now tonight on ESPN at 7:45 Eastern, Pat White, Steve Slayton, and the West Virginia Mountaineers hope to lock up a spot in the BCS championship game. It's against Pittsburgh, and it's called the Backyard Brawl. Then at 8 Eastern on ESPN2, down in the desert, the Sun Devils and the Wildcats, college football primetime. Presented by Hampton Hotels at 745 Eastern on ESPN and College Football Primetime presented by GoDaddy.com at 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. 
Six oh nine to go first half ball on the 17 yard line. Powers in motion. Moyval rolling. Throwing to Powers and he's got this one. He's out close to a first down. Jerome Boyd on the stop. Todd Harris I know you have a special story for us. Well Dan you talk about this civil war and how it separates families here in the great state of Oregon. Well here's two that were brought together. That is Tech Sergeant Darren G from Portland. First Lieutenant Brandon Hill also of Oregon and they're over in Iraq. We want to send out our best to them watching on Armed Forces Networks displaying the beavers and the ducks flag on that burned out take protecting our rights there in Baghdad and where it is about 2 a.m. Sunday morning in Baghdad. Thanks gentlemen. God bless him. You betcha. Thank you Todd. Second down and one for Severson. And Severson cannot pick up the first down. It's great this game is being carried around the world by American Forces Network. I've got a good friend in Casablanca, Morocco. He's a beaver, too. In fact, he was my best man, and I was his best man, Steve Johnson. And we certainly appreciate everything those guys do. Wow. A couple best men there, too. And I know Tragic is happy about this score. 14 point lead for the Beavers. And they've got a third down and one from the 26. Severson. And he's not going to get it. Great penetration by the Ducks. Alexis Cerna comes on to punt the ball to Jarris Bird. Cerna struggling with the punting chores. 30 yards on his first one, 35 on his second. This one does not turn over, hits the ground, but gets a great roll all the way down to the 32 yard line. Jarris Bird let that one roll, and that might have been a mistake. 42 yards on that punt. Time now for this week's Aflac trivia question. I know Beaver fans will know this one. Who's the only player to win the Heisman Trophy and play in the Final Four? That's a great question. And you're right. That's a layup for half the state. I was going to say, you're right about the folks here knowing the answer to that, but it's still a great question. Absolutely. I'm taking it back east. I'm going to win some money on that one. You bet. Only player to win the Heisman and play in the Final Four in basketball. Stewart will get a couple. Oregon has all three of their timeouts, as indicated by the yellow lines under the name Oregon. D. Andros, the great pumpkin, the coach of the Beavers for 11 years. That says it all right there. Second and eight for Roper. Time to throw over the middle and he's got a completion Ooh. and a big hit Al Afalava knocking Jeffrey Mail down but Mail gets back up first down Oregon and a flag is down could be a blow to the head by Al Afalava Afalava put his hands up and said hey what did I do I was coming hard at the ball and trying to go high he'll tell you right Personal here foul number nine on the defense helmet to helmet contact 15 yards added it into the catch first down here it is Afalaba comes hard has him lined up Woo. goes shoulder first and knocks him loose how did male hang on to this ball I don't know but that that is some vicious hit and there's the hat the hat typical defensive outlook that's a great catch it was a great <laughs> hit too. And just what the Ducks needed to get the extra 15 yards moves the ball all the way to the Beaver 38 yard line. Here's a backwards pass to Ed Dixon and now he's going to run it. Dixon has a 30 the tight end looking to throw the ball the Beavers covered it down the field but Dixon heads up picks up another first down for Oregon. Yeah you could say that again Ed Dixon with a great decision there to tuck it and go. I mean it was great coverage downfield and he reads this thing. It's a pass from the get go. Here comes Dixon Dixon looks downfield there's coverage and he doesn't waste any time doesn't hesitate makes a great decision goes after the first down markers. 
Ball now at the 28 yard line of Oregon State. Here's Stewart. Big hole right side. Stewart inside the 15 down to the 11 yard line. Derek Doggett and Jeff Van Orso stop him there, but that was a good run. First one in a long time for Jonathan Stewart. Yeah, so Dixon makes a good decision, gets a first, then all of a sudden Stewart looks like he's got his old feet back and he's starting to make some good cuts and go strong. They get him. And then they jump. Somebody jumped and then everybody's pointing at everybody. Stewart got 17 yards on that run play. This should be on the defense. They got into the neutral zone. But were they induced? That's what they're talking about right there in that huddle. This is where everybody lobbies and waits to see what the call is. Defensive coordinator Mark snap, Banker. False start. Number 66 on the offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Inducement, boys. Pat Sawalo. I thought it was. Uh, when we talked to Mark Banker, I loved his comment about tackling Jonathan Stewart. What did he say? Got to bring your big boy pads. <laughs> <laughs> like go bear hunting with a stick. Don't be afraid, boys. Bring the big boy pads. That'll back the Ducks up five yards. First down and 15 now. And here's Stewart again on that right side. Bounces off as one tackler and is taken out of bounds by Doggett. And that one tackler was LaRock, and he's a good tackler. But he didn't have his feet under him, so he couldn't use that. It was a one arm, and Stewart will break that every time. Here it is. Now watch 42. LaRock comes hard. Then he reaches out with that left hand, but he doesn't have his feet under him. Great job by Stewart to bounce outside and pick up the extra yardage. Jordan Holmes doing a good job blocking on LaRock as Stewart went by. Here's Stewart again, same side. Inside the 10 now. Down to about the eight yard line, down to the seven yard line. Todd? Dan, you talk about Jonathan Stewart, just how strong he is. Well, he is the strongest duck this year, and he would have been the strongest duck a couple of years ago had it not been for Haloti Nata now with the Baltimore Ravens. Stewart posts a power clean lift of, get this, 402 pounds, just five pounds left than Nata. Stewart also benches a Brant like 410, best ever for any Oregon running back, and he's using it all now. Yeah, baby. That's Brant style. Third down and seven for Oregon as Stewart goes in motion. Roper with a throwback screen. Malachi Lewis. A little slow getting underway after that reception is tackled by Doggett short of the first down. But this is what Mike Bellotti was telling us yesterday. If he has a fourth down opportunity, he's going to go for it. So this is the Civil War. And if we're down in the red zone, we're going for it. Even in midfield, if it's fourth, if the, if the timing is right, we're going for it. And I think right here, he's going for it. What a great play by Doggett. Oregon 5 of 11 this season, converting fourth downs. This one is critical. This is a civil war. Fourth and two from the four yard line. Roper to the end zone. Touchdown, Oregon. Garen Strong. The defense was looking for Stewart. They didn't respect. The running of Roper. But Roper throws a strike to Strong. Watch the separation. In, out. The ball is high, right where his guy can go get it. Perfectly thrown. Well done. Just the second touchdown catch of the senior's career, the senior from San Jose. Garen Strong with a great catch. Here's Roper, puts it down for Evenson, and Evenson puts it through. 66 yard drive, eight plays. Took two minutes, 56 seconds. Three yard touchdown reception on senior day for Garen Strong. The drive aided by the personal foul penalty on Al Alfalaba. On Jeffrey Mail. Todd, I know that uh, Garen has really had a tough time lately. Well, Dan, no question. You really you got to cheer for a guy like this. Following the loss at UCLA, the Oregon Ducks flew back to Eugene, and on that flight, Garen Strong found out that his brother, younger brother Tyler, passed away after a four-year battle with cancer. Now, he said he's going to play in this game to honor his brother. His family's here. They have to go back to San Jose, though, to have that funeral services. But he said tonight he is playing for his brother's memory, and our thoughts and prayers go out to the entire Strong family. But 
congratulations to him. That's got to lighten the burden just a bit. Thank you, Todd. Shows you just how much this sport of football and this game, the Civil War, means to these young men and their families. And for him to dedicate this game to his brother, boy, what a great, great route he just ran and touchdown he scored for his brother. And really has brought Oregon back into the ball game. Back deep for this Evenson kickoff. Here's Gerard Lawson. And he gets across the 25 yard line. Beavers have one timeout. One minute and six seconds to go. Time now to check in with Stan Verrett. Stan? All right, Dan, Jesse Palmer will be with me for halftime. LSU's Les Miles, is he staying or going? We think we know. For now, Virginia Tech looking for revenge after that earlier loss to BC and USC looking for revenge to end Roses against UCLA. Yeah, you know, LSU keeping Les Miles is big, but there's somebody else in Baton Rouge they need to keep, and that might be just as important as keeping Les Miles. All right, we'll get into all that coming up at the half, Dan. We'll lead the Beavers out from the 25 yard line. Just one time out to work and a long way to go. Oregon has three though. If they can get a stop or a negative play, they may start using some timeouts down here. Here's a quarterback draw and there's your stop and there's your fumble. And Oregon's got it on the fly. At the 20, the 15, Jarris Bird scores. Touchdown Ducks. told his defense I want three turnovers and two scores there's the turnover here's the scoop and score and the Ducks are back in this thing terrific play by the defense they were going to try to use their timeouts and try to get points on the board in this last minute and they got it without using any TOs if David Faatete the senior from Medford Oregon North High School ripped that ball loose as Oregon is called timeout and Jarris Bird with the scoop and score, Tim. Both teams today have scored defensive touchdowns. Doggett with the 28 yard interception return. There's Nick Aliotti, defensive coordinator, set those goals. He knows that Jarris Bird is the guy that makes things happen. Of course, Gil Bird put those jeans in him and five interceptions. Got a couple sacks. Now he's got a touchdown here on the scoop and score on the fumble return for 33 yards. Thirty three yard fumble return by Jarris Bird. I played with his daddy Gil Bird in San Diego. Outstanding player outstanding man his son just like him. Boy how things have changed. 54 seconds to go first half. And Evenson ties the ball game. Just moments ago, Oregon State had a comfortable 14 point lead, but Oregon in 12 seconds has scored twice to tie this one up. And this whole stadium's rocking. It was real quiet here a couple minutes ago. Into the play of the Beavers. Now you go back to Doggett's interception return for a touchdown. He did the same thing last year in Reeser Stadium against Brady Leaf and the Ducks. Anything can happen in a rivalry game. It usually does. Mike Riley told us his first real distinct memory of the Civil War. His dad was coaching. It was at Hayward Field. And what he remembers is a great Thurman Bell interception. Hayward Field, of course, is track only since 1967, but he's he's been a part of this and remembers this. And Civil War's been a part of his life for a long, long time. I think right now he just wants to get to the clubhouse. Be interesting to see what they do after they get the ball back after the Evenson kickoff. Lawson and Rogers are deep for the Beavers. I 
was a line drive kickoff by Evenson. Pushing Lawson back to the goal line. He's out to the 20. And hit at the 30 yard line and pushed back right there. Oregon only had 10 guys on the. Well, earlier we asked you the Aflac trivia question who's the only player to win the Heisman Trophy and play in the Final Four? The answer is absolutely Terry Baker. The Heisman Trophy in 62, the first Heisman Trophy winner from the West Coast. Played in the Final Four for the Beavers. Sweet left hander. Boy, would he fit in quite nicely in today's game. The spread offenses, the way he could run and pass. Moifau under center. Here's Polk. And Polk gets tackled as he crosses the 30 yard line. Oregon. Chief Glenn Polk picks up a yard. Todd, things have certainly changed. <laughs> Well, Dan, you've played in your fair share of big games here at Autzen Stadium, but I cannot tell you how the flow has changed so much. It has not been this noisy since they introduced Dennis Dixon in pregame warm-ups. The fans are back into it. Everyone now that is wearing green and gold is standing as opposed to about five minutes ago when everyone was sitting. The Beaver fans have now taken that position. Thank you, Todd. And the Beavers are content, and I think Oregon is too, to take this tie ball game to the house. Yeah, Mike Riley's telling him just... Let the time go down. See ya. Let's get in the clubhouse. And this stadium will erupt. Strike up the band. The 111th meeting of these two great schools is all tied after one half of football. Todd Harris is with Mike Riley. Todd? Well, tied at 21, Coach, you're still smiling. How do you stop the flow and the momentum that shifted over to the Ducks? Well, we just got to come back out and play the game. You know, we, we have, uh, you know, given them some plays, you know, with the, with the turnovers that, uh, and, and then they made a good fourth down play down there. So it's just going to be a good, hard-nosed football game in the second half. We just got to turn it back on. You have a young, enthusiastic quarterback. What do you tell him about when he scrambles now? Put the ball away. Take care of the football. That you know that's been our deal. So if we do that, we're going to be all right. Thanks, coach. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Todd. The Beavers now have lost 11 fumbles on the year, Tim. Well, costly ones today. Sure, that's exactly right, and that's what Mike's talking about. If they protect the football, they still lead in this ball game. And he's telling his guys, "Hey, look, we've just got to continue to do what we're doing, and we can win it." Well, Tim Oregon will get the ball to start the second half. We're tied in Eugene, 21 all. Now let's join Stan and Jesse Palmer in the studio. Fellas, take it away. All right, Dan, thanks a lot. Let's get. Welcome back to Jimmy V Week on ESPN in Eugene, Oregon. Civil War time, all tied up, 21 all. Tim Brandt, Dan Fouts with the upstairs. Todd Harris down the field. Look back, the Beavers were in control of this one, Tim, to start with, but in 19 seconds, the Ducks came back. Yeah, it's one of those situations where Oregon State has three turnovers, but they've outrun them and they've doubled their passing yardage. Here's the situation. Here comes Matthew Silverson. Silverson now takes that thing 38 yards for the touchdown right up the middle. And right now, it was all Oregon State. But Jeffrey Mayo catches his pass from Oprah. 31 yard touchdown. We're tied at seven. Second quarter, Derek Doggett. 20 yard interception return for a touchdown. And everything started to go toward the Beavers until this. Late in the second half, Darius Bird picks up the fumble, 33 yards. We are tied at 21, and that's where the game stands. So the three turnovers by Oregon State have hurt them, even though they've outrun them, and they've doubled their passing yards. Well, and in any big rivalry game, the big hits, and we've had our share. Well, these guys definitely know the difference between come here and sick them. Quarterbacks have been taking licks the entire game. And then how about on special teams? You think these guys don't come with bad intentions? <laughs> yes, sir. That's a rivalry game. Civil War. Oregon, Oregon State. That's great stuff. And one of those big hits was on starting quarterback Cody Kempt of Oregon. Knocked him out of the game. Here's the kickoff to start the second half. Walter Thurman has got it. And Thurman across the 35 yard line out close to the 40 yard line. So Justin Roper the quarterback for the Ducks will have good field position to start the second half. Let's go back to the really the key play in the first half Tim this pass to Reese ruled incomplete. 
Yeah, and the rule book says not only does he make the catch when the left foot comes down, but when he hits the ground, he still has to have complete control of that football. I thought he had control. He was holding the football. His knee touched down. He still had control, but when he lost, lost it when he hit the ground. And I talked to Fred Gallagher, the replay official at halftime. He says you have to prove you can control the ball through the whole process. That's why it was not a touchdown. And then Alexis Cerna misses a 33 yard field goal. Here's Jonathan Stewart with a huge hole up the middle across the 40 yard line. Jonathan Stewart, 21 yards. Todd Harris. Well, Dan, I talked with Coach Mike Bellani just moments ago, and he did reveal the news that Cody Kemp is done for the day with a concussion. So Justin Roper will have to go the whole way. I said, Who's your backup quarterback? Well, it's a converted rover, Marvin Johnson. Now, he did play at Dominguez High School in Compton, California, as a quarterback, so he has experience. But they also told me that Jonathan Stewart in a lot of pain. There's nothing they can do for that turf toe. They said they'll give him some anti inflammatories. They said he does not like tape on his foot, so he is just going to go the difference, diff distance with that steel shank that's trying to protect that turf toe. Dan? Thank you, Todd. He may be in pain, but he is administering pain right now with those first two carries. 22 carries, 121 yards for the man in pain. And here he is again. And the Beavers gang up on him in the backfield. Bad exchange that time with Roper. And again, Stewart slow to get up. I mean, he is just playing with heart today. You know how badly that toe's got to hurt. Yeah, in last year's game, Tim, against the Beavers in Corvallis, really when Jonathan Stewart came of age in my mind, put the team on his back in that second half and he got twisted back there almost hurt his knee on that play but really outstanding job last year in the Civil War for Stewart. Here's Roper and that ball again almost intercepted and again it was Doggett who almost stepped in front of that one. Got to believe it was an emotional locker room for Oregon they came in there Mike Pilotti had to be fired up you know Nick Aliotti was fired up and Dennis Dixon yelling and screaming in that locker room. They ended that first half so strongly with those touchdowns in less than 20 seconds to tie this ball game. Yeah, Bilotti told you he's going to go for it on fourth down today. Here it is, fourth and six. They converted a touchdown last time on fourth down. Big hit on Roper. Ball is incomplete. Getting in on Roper was Dorian Smith. That ball could have been picked off, but the Beavers will get the ball. With good field position at the 36 yard line. Well, Smith came hard. Dorian Smith, he was going after his seventh sack of the knee or the year. He's had playing with a bad knee, but this ball, it's a good play by Bellotti, though, to go for it right there. You're down in four down distance. It doesn't hurt you badly. You only give the ball up at the 36 if you don't get the first. The problem is that Roper took a pretty good hit, and if you're down your last quarterback, you don't want him taking hits like that from Smith. It would have been a real long field goal, about 54 yards for Evenson. The first carry of the second half is by Severson and Nick Reed jumps on him. Severson's first carry today was that long touchdown run 31 yards. Severson is now over 100 yards rushing. First carry of the day he went 38 yards right up the middle for a touchdown. I think the bye week really helped him, allowed the Beavers to fine tune and define their offense and put in a few new wrinkles. You mentioned that in the first half, and I don't think there's any question it's really helped him. Second and seven. Rodgers in motion. Fake to Rodgers. Severson is hitting the backfield. Another tackle for a loss for this Oregon defense. Bami Ajiman first there, number 30. Fairly conservative play for the Beavers. And I don't think Rodgers is getting as many touches as OSU would like. They want him to get involved. And Mike Riley told us they want Rodgers to touch the ball because he's at threat every single time he's involved in a play to go the distance. He runs at 10, 300 meters. That's fast. From the shotgun, Moyval. Blitz by Oregon. Time to throw. Completed pass over the middle to his big tight end. That's Howard Kroom, first down, Oregon State. Howard Kroom gives him that big target, 6'3, 241 pounds. He's out of Long Beach, California. Very quiet in the first half. Maybe they'll start looking to the tight end and go out that way and then start going out to the wideouts. 
Oregon State's offensive line doing a great job protecting young Lyle Moivo. No sacks in that first half and time to throw on that third down. Balls out at midfield. Here's Rodgers. And Rodgers got running room. Thurman trips him up across the 45 yard line, but a good gain on first down. Take a look at the first half statistics of the 111th Civil War, and you look at right down here to the turnovers, and you say, all right, well, this has been a factor. Then you look at the points off turnovers, that's pretty even. Third down conversion, ne neither team has really done well. But if you look up here, it's been pretty much dominated by OSU. Rodgers got eight on the reverse. They call it the fly sweep. Clinton Polk, the tailback for Severson on second and two. And Polk is hit in the backfield and will struggle just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Again, Nick Reed leading Sacker in the Pac-10 with a tackle there. You know, it was funny talking to Mike Riley earlier in the week. He said the same thing that he told Todd at halftime. We've got to take care of the ball. And we've got to be able to run the football. And they haven't done that so far, but they're still tied at 21 and pretty much have dominated this ball game other than those turnovers. Third and two, Clinton Polk, the tailback. Powers in motion. Fake to Polk. Moivau with a wide open tight end again. Crooms got it, and he's got another first down for the Aggies. Take a look at your tight end on the right side here, and he just kind of releases, gets that little fake block, then gets back out in the flat, and there he is wide open. Nobody chipped him. Nobody let. He just got off the line of scrimmage free, and they can do that all day. Well, if you're running the ball as well as the Beavers are, play action pass is just going to be super effective, as it was on that play. Yeah, and a tight end should never get off the line of scrimmage freely. You got to, you got to at least chip him. Play clock running down. Moivau, a lot of time surveying the field. Now he throws the ball away. Was not out of the tackle box. Was hit by Jeremy Gibbs and Nick Reed. Incomplete pass. Crowd wanted a flag. Did not see a receiver in the area. Tackle box, tackle box, tackle box. Here comes the pressure. Yeah, he may have drifted far enough. Yeah, I think he did. Yeah, Jack Foliard right on top of things. Saw the drift out of the tackle box and the legal throwaway because it went past the line of scrimmage. That's yeah, a good no call. Second and ten for the Beavs. Quick pass out here, incomplete. Catchings could not make the catch. That is a tough catch for anyone running away from the quarterback ball just out in front a little bit too much. You know what Mike Riley told me about Moival this morning. No. He said not only is he a tough kid not only is he a great athlete but the guy can dance. <laughs> oh seriously you know he's saying that Hawaiian thing and he does he does all the traditional dances entertains the whole team keeps them loose all the time. Uh, he is really turning into a passionate leader for this Beaver offense just what they needed after Canfield goes down. He's a character. Severson's a tailback on third and ten now. Oregon blitzes from the corner. Severson's got it. And he's out of bounds just short of the first down by about three yards. Patrick Chung with a good tackle on the sideline. That pass went right to the area that was vacated by the blitzing Jairus Bird. Oregon State got away from this in the first half and they got a little bit conservative near the end of the half. But they're starting to open this thing back up. They go to the tight end, then they take Severson, they swing him. They tried to get the ball to Rodgers, then they threw the little flanker screen, so they're starting to mix things up. They're starting to get back in the flow of the game, but they too now are faced with that critical fourth down. Fourth and two, the Beavs have been real good on fourth downs this year. Nine of 14 converting the difficult situation. Play clock running down. Play clock runs out. Flag is thrown. 
So again, the inexperience, perhaps, perhaps Tim, now. of young boys. Blame game, offense. Five yard penalty, fourth down. Now, yeah, that, that, what's that the decision? Should, that should definitely not happen. Moivau staying on the field. They still feel like they're down in four down territory. But obviously now the play call has to change because now it's a load. Now the field goal here would be just about 50 51 yards and Alexis Cerna has a great leg a career long of 58. He's hit a 52 yarder this year. But it's cold and damp here in Eugene. They're going to take a time out and talk about it. 929 to go third quarter. Crucial talk on the sideline coming up. Beam. Welcome. Welcome back to Eugene. We're all tied at 21. That is Alexis Cerna. They have brought him on for the Oregon State Beavers. I had a chance to talk to him during halftime. And I said, Alexis, if it comes down to it, what are you comfortable with in these conditions? He said, 50 and under, no problem, Dan. Now he's about six inches longer than 50 right here, Todd. The wind, whatever little bit there is, is at his back. Kavanaugh will put it down. It's on the way. It is short. No good. Never really got good contact with the ball. That wouldn't have been good from 40 yards. That was short and left. It was almost as if he stubbed it. Well, last year he hit a 40 yarder to win the Civil War for the Beavers, but you're right, Tim. This did not look good from the get go. No, I, his plant foot was solid, but he hit it fat. Here it is. Now watch his left plant foot is fine, but he hits it fat and low on the ball. His foot actually hit the ground before it hit the football, just like a duff in, in golf, and he came up way short. Why did you look at me when you said duff, duff in golf? <laughs> Oregon with the, the ball out all the way out to midfield here. That's Jonathan Stewart with another big run on first down. Well, Jonathan Stewart's got to get so much credit today now as the rain starts to come down. They're calling for sleet, a little bit of snow. But Jonathan Stewart is about 90%. He's got a turf toe. And he's out here battling and cutting and hitting and running and just doing a great job because all the Ducks said they didn't think they could play and they couldn't win without Jonathan Stewart. So he's gotten it out today. He's playing and he's not once winced. Well, he might have winced, but he didn't stop playing. <laughs> And I know number 11, Justin Roper, is happy to see Jonathan Stewart carry and be effective as he is again on this play. What a gutty performance. I got a chance to work with Eric Dickerson on Monday Night Football, and he told us that the most painful injury a running back can possibly have is not a knee, it's not an ankle, not a shoulder, it's the turf toe, because every time you put your foot on the ground it feels like a knife is going right through the bottom of your foot. What great balance that time. Dorian Smith with penetration on Stewart almost took him down for a big loss. You know and, and Chris Pfeiffer our producer he uh, was working with E.D. And, and E.D. told him Dickerson told him he actually had to cut his shoe. He had to make it like a convertible shoe take all the pressure off that toe that he possibly could because you couldn't even touch it without really excruciating pain. Good penetration, good strength, gets him right around the foot. The balance to stay up, but just that little stumble allowed the pursuit to get there. This will be a third down and six now from the 48-yard line for Roper. And he's got a wide open receiver. It's Mail. Mail's got it at the 20, inside the 20, out of bounds. First down, Oregon. Mail was a defensive back. But they had so many injuries and so many guys down that they moved Mayo, a great athlete, over to the offense. And Roper put a lot of air under that ball. This is well thrown. But there is Mayo, the defensive back who is now playing offense. They're using that athletic ability, and that's the second big catch he's had in this ball game. Good for 33 yards on that third down and six. Stewart left side. Stewart to the 10 and out of bounds at the nine. As the rain falls in Eugene. The crowd saying, Stew, Stew. He knows what it's like to play in the rain. He's from Lacey, Washington. 
Might have a little ice in it too. Rain sleep mix. He got seven on that first down carry ball on the eight yard line as Roper looks to the sidelines and adjusts the call at the line of scrimmage. Gives to Stewart and Stewart hitting the backfield and pushes forward for about a half a yard. Derek Doggett and Curtis Coker with another stop. Talking about the call at the line of scrimmage and Max Unger makes that call up there for the offensive lineman. He's the center. He released that time and he couldn't find anybody to block. He looked left, he looked right, couldn't find anybody, came back, and the only contact he had on that play was helping Stewart back up off the ground. Boy, just love to look in the eyes of players on both sides of the ball, the intensity in this tie ball game. Roper's got it. Roper's got a touchdown. Freshman in the end zone giving the Ducks their first lead of the ball game. Coach Dixon likes it on the sidelines. Evenson squeezes it in. Justin Roper. Seven plays, 67 yards, 21 unanswered points for Oregon. Great picture there of Tommy Prothrow, the Oregon State great head coach, and Len Casanova, the Oregon legend, in our flashback looks at this great rivalry. Evenson with the kickoff. Lawson will return it from inside his five. It's a reverse. Out to the 30. James Rogers has got it to midfield. Rogers still on his feet, still in bounds into duck territory at the 41 yard line. He may have stepped out of bounds back near midfield, but what a return. Perfect execution with the special teams. Well, they certainly wanted to get him the ball every way possible, as many ways as possible. They took this reverse all the way across the field. Now, if you just stop it there, look at all the blocking and look at what he sees. This is what he's seeing right here to the goal line. But Rogers here. Gets the blockers, spins. Now watch and see if he steps out. Keeps his feet in bounds. Back Stepped out left. right back there. So he got a great mark on this ball. To see now they they'll look it. at it. Yep. They just saw what we saw. So now they'll look at this again. The previous play is under review. While we take a look at this one upstairs, we'll take this break. The Patriots. Back at Austin Stadium, best field position to start a drive for the Beavers, but it's not as much as they thought. He's ruled out of bounds at the 49 and a half yard line. Good catch by the replay officials upstairs. But excellent field position for Lau. Moivau. He's joined in the backfield by Matt Severson. The Bend Lava Bears having a heck of a day in the Civil War. Still want to get a clarification. So they're talking to the replay one more time. Jack Foliard is our referee discussing things with Fred Gallagher, our replay official upstairs in the booth. So they're going to reset the clock. That's what that's about. We're told that they're going to reset the clock at 650 instead of 654.
with the timer, please reset the game clock to six minutes and 58 seconds. So they add four. So it'll be first and 10 for the Beavers in duck territory by about a half a yard. Center. It's Rodgers in motion. Fakes to Rodgers. Pressure flag down. No play. Illegal procedure against the Beavers. And a big smile from Lyle. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 51 on the offense. Five yard penalty. First down. You know, that, that shows me something, though. I mean, there he is. He's having fun playing in a football game. This is a game. He's out there having a ball. And as big as this game is, the Civil War, Oregon, Oregon State, I mean, he is out there enjoying himself. He wants to win. He's a competitor, but he's having fun. It also tells you how loose he is. Yeah, I asked him on the phone if he was smiling or grimacing. He said, no, 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 no. I love to smile. First and 15 what might make you grimace though at times. Yeah, the smile's going now. There's Rogers in motion. Fake to Rogers. Moivau goes down. Slips on the turf. We saw the rain coming down. Todd, is it raining down there? Well, Dan, the precipitation has stopped momentarily, but as you look into the sky to the west side, you actually see blue sky here at Autzen Stadium. And you know more than anyone else, it never rains at Autzen Stadium. But to the east side, a storm is a coming. The problem is the wind continues to swirl, and now with the moisture on the ground and the temperature dropping, it's a tad bit chilly. I'm not whining, I'm just saying it's a tad bit chilly. The bad thing is that field has so much loose rubber on it, and when his shoe is a little bit wet, he slipped on that thing. He had no chance. Huge loss of eight yards on that slippage. Screen pass to Severson. And the Ducks are ready for him, but he doesn't go out of bounds. And look at the strength of Matt Severson. Yeah, they list him at 212 pounds. He plays like a man about 230. Time now to check in with Stan Verrett. Stan? All right, Dan, Tennessee and LSU. Tigers up 13 7 until Eric Ainge goes to Josh Briscoe, second touchdown of the game for Ainge. And it's Tennessee with a one point lead, fourth quarter underway at the Georgia Dome. Thank you, Stan. Third down and 14 now for the Beavers. Blitz by Oregon. Time to throw over the middle. Almost intercepted. Looked like the ball was intended for T.J. Ward. Yeah, that's not a good pass at all. Miller was not even in the area. It was only the defensive backs playing that too deep, and he throws it right into him. See his tight end is held up there, but then up top, it's not even close. That was Powers who was deep. And Cerna with a another punt, fair catch signal made by Jarris Bird. And that Oregon will take over at the 11-yard line. Well, with national title hopes on the line, has been contender Chase Daniel, the number one. Missouri Tigers look to cement a spot in the BCS championship game. They take on the Sooners tonight. Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship part of Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. It's Oklahoma and Missouri. Tonight 8 Eastern on ABC and ABC HD. College football lives here. You know Oregon State defensively doing a lot what UCLA did last week as far as you know, they don't need a spy because Dixon's not in the ball game and they weren't really respecting Roper but now that he's had some big runs including the touchdown you watch how much attention he's going to get and the attention that Jonathan Stewart will get as he hits the right side and gets about five six yards Alan Darlin with a free ride on the back of 28 see and you've got to give Stewart so much attention because he's the guy I mean he's the one that's going to run he's there he's their workhorse. But at some point, if you ignore Roper, he's going to pull it right back away from Stewart like he did on the touchdown and take the corner. This ties a uh, school record. His eighth 100 yard rushing game. On a bad wheel, no less. And he's got that ball for about two yards as he's twisted down. 
Right in the middle of that Beaver defense. Yeah, and Dorian Smith came down hard to make that tackle on Stewart. And Roper took note of that. So if he rides him in that next time, he may pull it. Roper and Cody Kemp split snaps in practice this week. Roper's first play of the game was a touchdown pass of 31 yards to Jeffrey Mayo. And we've got movement up front. And this would be a huge call if it's against Oregon State. William Ako Laavea. It's going to be against Oregon. Jumped in the neutral zone. Was he induced him? You think so, huh? I do, and I think Max Unger was moving. Part of the snap, offsides. Defense, number 96. Five yard penalty. Results and a first down. You know, you defensive guys always look at things a little bit weird. Clearly he was offsides. That's what I said. He was offsides. <laughs> Watch Unger. Watch Unger. Nah. That's all part of it. That's part of the spread offense. But you're right, Tim. I mean, in the day you played, that would have been illegal procedure against Unger. Just saw the team unit there without the helmets. That's that was the era I played in. <laughs> so it'll be an Oregon first down out to the 23 yard line for Roper, and he'll throw pressure immediately. Slip screen to Ed Dixon will only get a yard. Immediate pressure right up the middle. Dennis Dixon still signaling in the plays. Second down and a long nine. Ducks have three wide receivers to the wide side of the field on second and nine. Stewart on the draw play. And Stewart runs into the arms of number 93, Dorian Smith. Smith having a huge game coming back from injury to get the start this afternoon. Really active, isn't he? 6'3, 260 pounds. And you mentioned that sprained knee, but I tell you what, he's all over the field today. He's reacting quickly. He's not really shown as you watch Gerard Lee go out of the game to get a new helmet or to get his fix. But look at 93 there on the left side of your screen. Now watch him come back. Just wrap his arms. Envelop Stewart. That brings up another third down for Justin Roper and the Ducks. And Roper's got it. Roper to the outside hesitates and does not get the first down. Joey LaRock. Takes him down. It appeared to, for an instant if he would have just taken off Tim, he might have got the first down. Well, LaRock's one of those guys that got sucked in on the, the touchdown. Watch 42. All right, he comes in, he reads Roper now, and he says, hey, he pulled his baby. So he's going back out, and it looks like he's outside containment and getting a block from his wide receiver, but he hesitated. Rather than cut it up, he just kind of moseyed on out to the outside. Here's Syrie with a punt. Low line drive. Kavanaugh to the wide side with a fair catch signal. And Syrie with a good job of pinning him to the sideline. Ball goes out of bounds at the 29 yard line. A punt of 42 yards for Josh Syrie. Syrie had 12 punts in the futile battle last week against the Bruins at the Rose Bowl. The 1971 Civil War. Now, the thing I remember most was Dan Fouts on the program cover. He had a kind of a three-dog night kind of thing going with those pants he had on. I really don't remember us losing the game by one. It was all about Dan and those pants. Yeah, the only thing missing from the mod squad there was Peggy Lipton, I think. First and ten for the Beavers. 29-yard line. Moyval. Play action. Throws, and he's got a wide open receiver at midfield. Morales, Shane Morales with his first catch of the day. Good for 21. Got plenty of time to throw, too. Malvo just got very comfortable in the pocket and waited for him to clear. Now, Malvo's drop here is good. Play action is not necessarily good. Doesn't freeze a whole lot of guys, but the block is terrific. And this time, rather than throwing off his heels, he just steps into it. Still throws a little bit high and a little bit behind him. But he finally stepped into the ball and moved the chains. Well, the offensive line is doing a great job. He hasn't been sacked yet. He did slip the last time they had the ball. Lost eight yards on that play, but that does not go down as a sack. Again, time to throw. He steps up and he throws another strike. Ball is out. 
And it's now ruled an incomplete pass. Well, Chris Johnson appeared to have the catch when he hit the ground. The ball came loose. Incomplete. Again, the ball was thrown perfectly. Chris Johnson looks like he has it here, bobbles it, bobbles it, and goes down to the ground. Oh, I thought he had a catch. I did too, and I think the Beaver fans do too. Right, here's the bobble. Now he's got it. Now he's got it. And now it's gone by the ground. But don't overlook the fact that Moivau's got a hot hand. He's hitting his receivers in stride now. Second and ten. He'll throw again. Plenty of time. time again. And he's got another completion. This one to Brown. Brown's out down to the 31 yard line of Oregon. Here's one of the all time best Oregon State receivers 131 receptions coming into this ball game and again the offensive line gives him all the time he needs play action still doesn't sell a whole lot of guys but look at the blocking out there Moval just stands reads goes through his progression throws on time and there it is perfectly thrown between the one and seven to Anthony Brown Beavers have only given up 31 sacks all year the Ducks have 35 as a defensive unit. Not getting anywhere near number three. Brown in motion. Third pass in a row for Moival. Incomplete this time. Matthew Harper had the coverage on Anthony Brown. But again, Danny had plenty of time. The blocking up front was solid. Nobody was penetrating. And Moval now really feeling comfortable in that pocket. The last two years, Oregon State has been the best Pac-10 team in the months of October, November, December. 13 and 3 in those months. So here we are now in December, late in the ball game, and they're trailing, but Mobile's getting comfortable. Second and 10 from the 31 yard line of Oregon. Ducks rush six. Pump fake. Moyval. Patrick Chung on the coverage flag down trying to get the ball to Morales. Chung says who me. So that'll be 15 yards and take him down in the red zone. Pass interference on the defense number 15. Penalty is 15 yards from the previous spot automatic first down. Had his right hand in his stomach. And before he looked back, it looked like a push. Watch the bottom of your screen here now. 15 is Chung. There's the right hand, pushes him, and he turns late. There's definitely contact. Watch the right hand. There's the push. Positions himself. Yeah, that right hand is it all you need for pass interference. Just Good ask call. Shane Morales. Good call. First and 10 for the Beavers now at the 16 yard line. And Polk the tailback. Rogers in motion. Polk's got it. And Polk almost goes down. Ball is loose. Rogers has got it. James Rogers, the man they faked the ball to, heads up by number eight. Can't believe how careless Oregon State has been with the football today. He tries to get that second effort, keeps his balance. That's when the ball comes out. And you're right, great awareness by Rodgers. Rodgers was about 10 yards behind him. And he sees the ball and immediately explodes to it. And rather than scoop it, he was smart and got down on it. And Clinton goes to the sidelines as Severson takes his spot in the tailback. Rodgers again in motion. Flag. Whistle blows. Play clock. That's the end of the quarter. And the game clock runs out. End of three in Eugene. Ducks lead by seven. The V Foundation in the fight against cancer. Call 1 800 for Jimmy V or log on to www.jimmyv.org and donate and do it now. Start of the fourth quarter in Eugene. 111th Civil War Matt Severson trying to get to the outside trying to get that first down he's close he's got it at the five yard line and he runs hard and he cuts quickly 
It's a good read. Got to the corner and turned it up and got the first. Now his quarterback. Boy, I'll make a foul. We'll get into the end zone. Gives it to Sears and this time. That's a great cut on the outside. And you know, here's a guy that came from Bend High School, Bend High Lava Bear, and was playing defense. Making the most of his opportunity today, already over 100 yards rushing. First and goal for the Bees from the five. Boy, out to the end zone. In caught and out of bounds at the one yard line just short of the end zone Shane Morales with a good catch and Morales again this is a spectacular catch but more importantly great body control to make the catch and keep a foot in bounds watch this his momentum takes him that way he's got the foot he's being pushed from behind and still has that foot down great job great concentration great body control because I mean Harper is pushing him from behind as soon as he gets his hands on it there's the push and his feet are down. And the Beavers have the ball on the one yard line. Andy Stewart, the fullback, number 38, in front of Severson. Severson in motion. Moival on the rollout. Touchdown, Oregon State. First offensive point scored since 50 seconds were left in the first quarter. Last I, touchdown by Oregon State was Doggett's interception return for a touchdown in the second quarter. I told you, boy, I'll make a foul to get into the end zone, and here he is. Gets a block on the corner. He's just a tough kid. He's a great leader. Naturally fast, mobile, and tough. Certainly not very big, but take him anytime you play this game. Sunset High School. Andy Stewart with that key block on the corner, Tim. Here's Cerna tying the game. Oh, this is going to be a great fourth quarter. Alexis Cernan with 140 consecutive point after touchdowns. A Pac-10 record. Congratulations. Fridays. Just underway here in the fourth quarter as the wind blows the ball off the tee for Cerna. Just tied the game up with an extra point after Another quarterback scored a touchdown. In fact, both quarterbacks have touchdown runs in this half. And those are the only points. Moy Val and Justin Roper. Deep for Oregon, Andy L. Brown and Walter Thurman. Thurman at about the nine yard line. Thurman across the 30, spinning out to the 35 yard line. And again, Oregon will have good field position. Time now to check in with Stan Verrett. Stan? All right, Dan, we got an update from the SEC Championship game. Eric Ainge, deep in his own territory. Inside, picked, picked off by off. Jonathan Zenon, and he's in for the touchdown. Two-pointer good. LSU up now, 21-14 in Atlanta. Championship Saturday continues over on ABC, 8 Eastern time. Chase Daniel trying to chase down the Heisman and a trip to the national title game against Oklahoma. And West Virginia also looking to get to New Orleans. Their backyard brawl with Pittsburgh coming up at 7.45 Eastern time on ESPN. Thank you, Stan. Here's Justin Roper, and he's going to fire to Mail. Mail's got the completion out across the 40-yard line. How about Roper showing a lot of field awareness, knowing where he is on the football field, didn't get up to the line of scrimmage, kind of advanced that way, but let the ball rip before he got to the line of scrimmage. Legal pass, nice play. Bring up second down and short. One of those plays where you can open up the playbook. Always come back and get the first on third. He does look more comfortable in this offense. I give Chip Kelly a lot of credit. Offensive coordinator getting both Roper and Kemp ready for this game in just a week. Here's Roper to the wide side. He's got the first down looking for the sidelines. Get pushed in the back by Derek Doggett as he goes out of bounds. No flag. Uh, the crowd wanted a late hit, but he pushed him while he was still in bounds. So that's a legal play. Just took forever for Roper to get to the sidelines. He's got those long strides, and he's that tall fella. He's six foot six now, and only 205 pounds. Runs in sections. Jingle joints. 49 yard line is where they place the ball. Bad snap, and Roper goes down on it. You can hear the wall being banged by the coaches up here in the press box. 
that's one of those things that's one of those balls that first of all I don't know if Dennis Dixon would have let that thing get by him but secondly he would have scooped it up and made a play out of it or Roper and it's actually a pretty smart play by Roper because he doesn't have that many repetitions but he got down on it just to protect it and make sure that they kept the ball and for you lip readers you saw Max Unger say my bad bad snap by the center another one and again Roper goes down and he did go down in sections that time. You know, Oregon has had some serious quarterback injuries. Dennis Dixon first hurt his knee in Oregon against Arizona State. Then he played the next game against Arizona, tore his ACL, lost for the season. Brady Leaf replaced Dixon, and Brady Leaf then got into trouble because we saw him last week against UCLA, and right there he gets rolled up on. He recovered enough to start the following week. But, folks, they have had some serious problems with Dixon and Leaf and the injuries that they've had with the knees and the ankles. They've lost 17 yards and two bad snaps. Here's Jonathan Stewart trying to get something across the 30 yard line. That's his 32nd carry of the afternoon, which ties a career high. He rushed 32 times against the Huskies for 251 yards earlier this season. Not able to gain anything on that play. So Syree with another punt. Kavanaugh. And he'll bring it back. Flag down. This is going to be a block in the back. Apparently. Penalty play on the field. 41 yards on the kick. And Patrick Fuller may have been the guilty party trying to clear the way for Kavanaugh. He's from Lincoln High School in Portland. Todd Harris is. Alma mater. Illegal block in the back on the return team during the return. Number 34. 10 yard penalty, spot of foul, first down. You know, the, the bad thing about those those snaps and then this penalty is the fact that it's kind of taking both teams out of sync. We'll be back. Number 7th, Leon Theater. In the household, I don't know. I don't get any calls during this week. I don't know why. Yeah, I know. I think because uh, everybody's, you know, they're trying to make you feel better about, <laughs> you know, you made the choice of going to Oregon, but you know, they really, they got, they got that origin side. I think it hurts them to call me because they know that I made the right decision. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that's why. They yeah, I know call Grandma's me. not calling because when I told her I was coming to Oregon, she cried. Torn asunder by the Civil War. Here's Severson. He's got room on the left side, breaking a tackle, picking up a first down, and getting out of bounds. 15 yards on the first down carry for Matt Severson. Now has 123 yards in the ball game, and he got this thing going right from the get-go with the 31-yard touchdown run, and here it is. Great blocking up front, got into the second level, and they weren't going to catch him. This guy is starting because Bernard's out of the ball game. And he's been playing well the entire game. Great vision, good balance, hitting the corners quickly. He's keeping a low center of gravity. Just an outstanding job and a surprising 122 yards for the game. He only had 202 yards rushing the entire season. There's Moivau. Pressure by Reed. Complete to Severson, but Oregon sniffed that up and dropped Severson for another loss. Edmondson Bernard, three time 1,000 yard rusher out of the ball game because of his sore knee. So it's turned out to be a shootout between Severson and Stewart. Now we knew Stewart had this capability, but look at Severson. Averaging almost seven yards a carry. Wow. And on that pass reception, he lost three yards back to the 31 yard line. Just gets it off in time. Again, time to throw, and Moivau has got his receiver out at midfield. Powers with the catch there. Really did a nice job of throwing it over the DB. The rover was sitting shallow, and he throws it right over his head to get the completion. So he threw it over the rover and under the safety, and Harper was back there in coverage, and he couldn't do anything. That, that was just perfectly placed by Moivau. 18 yards on that perfectly placed Moy Val pass. Well, better. 
and better and better. Tongue twisting too. First and ten at midfield. Severson hitting the backfield. Nick Reed with another tackle. He's not getting to the quarterback today, but he's doing a solid job against the run. Okay. Nick Reed just watch number 49. Jump into the play, break down, come under control, and then explode to make the tackle. He looks like he has some wrestling background from Mission Viejo High School. Well, if you don't come under control, they're going to run around you, and he does that as well as any defender. No gain for Severson. As we move to 10 minutes to go in the Civil War. Rogers in motion, fake to him. Moivau again, time to throw. Intercepted. Intercepted by Walter Thurman. Thurman out to midfield. Third turnover of the day for the Oregon defense. Dan, you said a mistake may decide this ball game, and that's a bad mistake by Moivau. Because he tries to slip this thing in there, and there's just nowhere to put it. That is great coverage by Thurman. It's his fourth interception of the year, and watch how he jumps this route. Reads it right in front of it, played it inside out, broke on the ball, and made the pick. Big time play by a terrific defender. And sets up the Oregon offense on the 49 yard line. Here's Roper faking the swing pass. Down the middle to his tight end at Dixon, and Dixon can only get one hand up on the ball. Looked like he had inside position on the defender. Boy, and he certainly had size. He's six foot five and a half. And I mean, there is a huge difference there when you look at Hughes, who's just barely 5'11, just a fraction of an inch out of his reach. Good pass by Justin Roper. He shifts mail to the wide side of the field. Crenshaw is the tailback. And Crenshaw has it. And he's got a big game. He's got a first down for Oregon. Andre Crenshaw with his best gain of the afternoon. Listen, this defense for Oregon State has been the best in this conference all year against the run. They're 17th in the nation. They only give up less than two yards a carry yep. and yet here they are and the Ducks are starting to pick them apart on the ground. Well the NCAA best 64 yards per game on the ground shows you there just how good they are. Stan Fred, how's it going Stan. Well Dan we got rivalry games all over the Pac-10 this evening UCLA and USC Josh Booty to Fred Davis big tight end in for the touchdown and the Trojans up 24 7 and their eyes on Pasadena now Rudy Carpenter in Arizona State hoping for a Trojan loss to stay in the Rose Bowl hunt but still lots to play for for them like bragging rights against their in-state rivals from Arizona that's coming up next here at ESPN 2. Thank you Stan I don't think you can talk fast enough because this Oregon offense they don't huddle they get to the line of scrimmage trying to change the tempo there Roper throwing incomplete bring up a third down and 12. You know the other thing it does by going fast is. Oregon State can't get guys in and out. They like to roll a lot of players in and out of the ball game and keep them fresh, and they aren't able to do that. That's a good point, Tim. Looks like they're in a cover two shell here for Roper across the middle into traffic to mail incomplete. I mean, Oregon State's defense plays with 10 defensive linemen. They rotate eight linebackers, nine DBs, so they stay fresh and play aggressive and just roll thunder at you the entire game. But Oregon now really. Trying to up tempo this thing so they can't change. Here's that hit and roll, and they come underneath of him, and mail. He gets air mailed. <laughs> Good coverage by Brian Payton, and Syrie will try to pin the Beavers deep in their own end of the field again. It's a tail dragger, and it bounces into the end zone just in front of Patrick Chung. 8:48 to go in the Civil War, and we are tied in Eugene. Back in Eugene for the Garmin Bull Buzz presented by Garmin. This is what's at stake tonight Missouri and Oklahoma, West Virginia and Pittsburgh. SC on top of UCLA right now down at the Coliseum. Could have two spread offenses in the national championship game with Missouri and West Virginia if they hold. 
First and ten for the Beavers at the 20 yard line. Moivat. It's a man in motion. And he'll throw. And he'll throw deep. And he'll throw incomplete to Daryl Catchings. He's not afraid to throw when a guy's covered. It gives his guy a chance to make that play. But the pick by Thurman showed that it's always not an easy decision, and his guy's not going to get it. We extend the bowl buzz. This is what the Pac-10 bowl arrangements are. Obviously, the Rose Bowl presented by City. Looks like SC will be going there. Winner of this game, well, the Holiday Bowl is a great bowl game down in San Diego. Second and ten. Severson searching. Finds about five on the right side. Tackled by Matthew Harper. That's still going to bring up a third and long, though, for Morval. Oregon players imploring this great sellout crowd to help out with some noise. 55th consecutive sellout here at Autzen Stadium. Moy Vow's got to battle the student section at this end of the field. Powers in motion. Moy Vow to throw for it to Powers. He's got him first down. Oregon State out of bounds. In front of Patrick Chung. Interesting on that third down play that James Rogers was not even in the ball game for OSU. Well designed play though. Moyval's got plenty of time and again the offensive line steps up does a good job and he just runs that quick out. Powers is having a nice ball game. He's made some nice catches came in with 25 catches so he's a good receiver. Now Rogers is in the game now he's at the top of the screen. And Severson in the backfield here's Rogers in motion. Fake to Rogers. Pressure steps up. And again he's got a receiver and again it's Powers first down for Oregon State into duck territory. Yeah Powers having a heck of a game his fifth catch here today. And somehow he's getting good separation and boy is one of those guys that will come back to you again and again if you prove that you can find the open area and sit down. Just finds that open area and the ball's waiting for him in midfield that is nicely done. And you know what he does as a quarterback Tim is he feels the pressure around him and slides up into the safe part of the pocket stepping forward not trying to escape out one side or the other and that gives him more passing lanes. He's only 5 11. He's got to look between the linemen. Severson stretch play to the wide side here and Reed's got him and pushes him out of bounds. Clock continues to roll though as he was pushed out going backwards. One of Oregon State's favorite plays is the fly sweep. They like to get outside but Oregon's been well prepared. Nick Aliotti hammered that thing home defensively. They've been looking for it. And there hadn't been much outside. Almost all of the big plays for OSU today have come between the tackles. As far as the running game is concerned. That offensive line doing a great job opening those holes and protecting the quarterback. No game. Fake to Severson. Boy, a lot of time. Now he throws to Severson. And Severson is tackled after a two yard gain. Walter Thurman and T.J. Ward. Boy, Darrell Catchings, when he got down to the 20, he freed up. He was open down the middle. Boy, Val just ran out of a little bit of time, or at least his comfort level, and he wanted to unload it and hit the safety valve. There's Ketchins. He's a freshman and he can flat out fly. Beavers 5 of 12. Converting third downs this afternoon. Third down and eight. Blitz by Oregon. Moyval incomplete. Trying to squeeze it into his tight end Kroom, but Ryan DiPaolo from Beaverton, Oregon makes the play. And this is one of those downs now where it brings up fourth and you're in Oregon territory. But you've got 545 to play in this ball game. You can't afford as you look at the replay here. You can't afford to go for it on fourth here. You got to back up the Ducks and let your defense the strength of your team try to win this thing for you. And Cerna with another punt. 
his fifth of the day. And it's a good one. High spiral. Bird will let it go, but it bites at the five yard line and backs up. Beautiful punt by Alexis Cerna. Five and a half to go in the 111th edition of the Civil War, all tied up. Five thirty four to go in the ball game or at least in regulation time tied up here. Mike Bellotti and Dennis Dixon Dixon went down with that knee injury against Arizona and uh, met with coach Mike Bellotti and Mike told him I don't think he should play you've got a lot of football ahead of you but he was cleared by the doctors after proving in practice that he could do it didn't have any swelling in the knee as Crenshaw takes the ball for about a two yard gain. And once uh, the doctors cleared Dixon to play, Bellotti said, fine. Unfortunately, with a torn accruciate ligament, just a uh, good brace on the knee and all, Tim, he just could not survive that twisting play in Arizona. I think Mike Bellotti did a great job in this thing. And he took a lot of heat for letting him play. But he conferred with the doctors, he conferred with the other coaches, conferred with the, the player, conferred with his parents, got everybody's indication of what should take place. Then he left it up to Dixon's father and himself. Then, and only then, did he let him play after the doctors say he couldn't hurt it any more than it's already hurt. So I think the decision was sound. He didn't want anybody else to know about it. That also upset some of the media because they didn't know about it. It was never yeah, you, given out that he had an ACL, and you certainly don't want your opponents to know that a guy's got a bad wheel. That's absolutely right. It's very common practice in football. Here's Roper on third down. And Mayo can't make the catch on a high pass. Brandon Hughes with the coverage and Daniel Drayton. Drayton hitting Mayo right in the back. Before we leave the, the Dixon subject, let me say this too. You and I watched him at practice. We do have a flag down, excuse me, Tim, back in the backfield. And it appears to be holding, holding against Oregon, so this will be refused. And the Beavers will get the holding ball back with good on the field offense, position. Number 71. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. But what I was going to say is you and I both have had knee operations. We've had surgeries. Yep. And I, I can never remember a knee situation like his where we watched him to practice the other day. He's still moving around and he's still throwing the ball and he, he doesn't even look in, injured. Now with that type of injury the pivot type of injury to the knee you can run straight ahead. You just can't twist on it and that's what cost him. Here's Syrie out of his end zone. High spiral that does not turn over Kavanaugh. Makes the catch, the fair catch at the 49 yard line. Well, I'm going to tell you something. This is what legends are made of now. 419 left in the Civil War. Great field position. You start at midfield, inside midfield, just inside at in Oregon territory. And for Oregon State, this should be like running downhill. They now have the advantage. They now will challenge the duck defense. And if you start to look in the eyes of some of the players down there, Moyval looks so confident as he takes control of the huddle on the sidelines. I want to take this time to congratulate the Sisters Outlaws and their 50 to 49 win over Ontario High School in the Oregon Class 4A semifinals. The Outlaws are undefeated heading to Reeser Stadium next Saturday to play for the title. And with their great running back Corey McCaffrey. Get this Tim. He's gained over 8,000 yards in his high school career for the Sisters Oregon Outlaws. Wow, I know you'll be there next week. Here's Rogers on the fly sweep to the wide side and he's got a good game close to a first down. You can almost hear defensive coordinator Nick Aliotti screaming from right down in the press box because that's something that he hammered home all week to his defense. The fly sweep fly sweep. Well here comes the fly sweep and there goes Rogers. James Rogers takes it around the corner. He's got a blocker out in front. And boy I'm telling you something Miller gets a, a little piece of somebody and they pick up a pretty good nine yard chunk. Second and one from the thirty nine of Oregon. Severson the tailback. Rogers in motion again. Severson's got it and he's got a first down. Todd this game may come down to a field goal. That's exactly right Dan and it's Alexis Cerner the 2005 Groza winner now it didn't start out so well in his career you remember a few years back in LSU this was the scene when the Beavers had a chance to knock off the LSU Tigers not one not two but three missed extra points Alexis Cerner was almost unconsolable 
the poor kid, you don't want that to happen to anybody, but I talked to him again at halftime, and he told me if it's inside 50, rain, shine, wind, he feels pretty confident he can split the uprights. Dan? Hasn't missed since then, Todd, and had a 40-yard field goal to win the Civil War last year. Here's Severson pile driving across the 35-yard line. Well, let's not put the cart before the horse here because this is a situation now where you got to protect the ball. This is what he did earlier. This wide right. Then he hit this one fat. It was left and short. So offensively, you got to think ball security. Let's not rush this thing. We still have 250 left. Melt the clock, shorten the game. Don't give them another chance to come back and score. We just want to put ourselves in scoring position here and try to do it offensively rather than on the toe of Cerner. Second down and eight. Severson breaking tackles across the 30 yard line. Cerner's missed field goals. The one that went wide right was a chip shot of 33 yards. The one that was short came from 50 yards. Todd said that before the game he talked to him and he said anything inside of 50 I feel real confident. Well this is a key third down situation right here for Oregon State. They get a first down here the game's over. Maybe. Two minutes to go. Boy foul under center. Fakes to Severson rolling right. Dumping it to his tight end. And they've got a first down inside the 20 yard line. That's Howard Proom with another big catch. Now move the chain, start the clock, let that thing tick down. Now ball security is key. And when does Oregon start to use one of their timeouts? You can see the Beavers have two, the Ducks three. Clock is stopped after they move the chains. Boy Val at the sidelines now comes back to the huddle. He'll try to use every bit of the play clock. Play clock down to 10. Two tight ends for the Beavers. Severson hit in the backfield and dropped. Matthew Harper, check that. That's Kevin Garrett, the linebacker, on the run blitz. And timeout is called by Oregon. 117 to go in the ball game. Beavers looking to get in field goal position. All tied up. A couple of classy coaches, a couple of mics on the sidelines. Mike Riley looking to beat the Ducks for the fourth time in his seven years coaching the Beavers. Second and 11. Fake to Severson. Moyval to the end zone incomplete. Thrown too far and it stops the clock. Gabe Miller couldn't make the catch. Miller the redshirt freshman out of Lake Oswego and that ball was just thrown too far. But that's a pretty good call because everybody's expecting the run there. They're positioning for the field goal. The situation was such that the defense was loading the box. So they take a shot. They take a gamble. They try to score and end it right there. Saves Oregon a timeout. Now you do want to just position it in the very middle of the field. They come wide side right. Severson will come up short of the first down. And he took a big shot in the back. So that'll put it on the right hash mark and give him a little bit of an angle. A little pep talk from the quarterback for the senior from Fontana, California. Remember, his two misses came at the other end of the field. I'm surprised they tried to take the corner there rather than position this thing right square in the middle of that that field between the two hash marks. That, that is a great point Tim because most right footed kickers do not like kicking across their body from the right hash. Absolutely mark. not. That's why I thought pre snap they were going to run this thing just to put it in the middle of the field. They would rather be on the other hash mark if they couldn't be right in the middle because then they can aim at the far upright. And draw the ball between the posts. Well, you've got 69 seconds left. OSU had a chance just to put this thing away, melt the clock, and 
win it. Now it comes down to this field goal, and it's pretty hefty. 35 yards of heft. Kavanaugh will place it down. Joel Cohen will snap it. 59,050 on their feet. Blocked! Blocked by Oregon. Walter Thurman blocked it. Oregon ball. Thurman, the sophomore from West Covina, California. Nine tackles, a forced fumble, an interception, and perhaps the biggest play of his career, the blocking of the Cerna field goal. Thurman was so far out on the right, he came free, untouched, and laid out perfectly. Just using that blistering speed and not afraid to take the ball in the face. A minute and one second to go for Roper. One timeout. He's going to the sidelines. Strong's got it. He's out of bounds. Take a look at how far Thurman was outside. Here he is right here, and he's coming this way and lays out perfectly. Times it. Came hard. Nobody touched him. He was running before the ball was snapped. He was so far outside, he wasn't offsides. And there was absolutely no fear of the velocity of that ball. Just laid out perfectly. Well, this isn't intramurals, brother. This is the Civil War. <laughs> First and ten for the Ducks now with 54 seconds to go. Trying to get Evenson in range. Roper over the middle. Derek Jones into Beaver territory. Gain of about six. Timeout, Oregon. Just the way a Civil War should be, huh? And the home field advantage OSU has not won on this field since 1993 and if you're wondering about the range of Matt Evenson career long 51 yards this year he hit a 47 yarder 13 of 16 field goals made and remember last year in the Civil War his kick at the end of the game never got up high enough and was blocked by the Beavers. Well, the visiting team in the Civil War has had a tough time winning this thing. I think you have to go back to Corvallis. The Ducks won there back in the 90s. Now, one thing, Tim, number four, Jason William, the Ducks' leading receiver, no catches today. I might be looking for number four at six foot five, 240 pounds. Crenshaw in the backfield with Roper. Williams at the top of the screen. Looking that way, and Williams has got it out of bounds. Jason Williams with a spectacular catch on the sidelines. Dan, we said at the beginning of the ball game, Stewart had to work hard and play through pain. Jason Williams had to make catches, and there he goes, using that frame that you talked about, using that 6 5 body, and going up and getting the ball. He's taking a lot of heat for his drops. He had six misses last week, but that's a big time catch there. I'd go right back to him, too. On the crossing route, Roper throws it away smartly. You know, Williams has had his drop problems. He's 6'5, 240 pounds, but Chip Kelly says, I'm going to keep feeding him the ball because he gets open. He runs like a deer. Sometimes he catches like a deer. The thing that has amazed me or perplexed me is the fact that, you know, the guy makes catches that are very, very difficult, but the ones that are right at him when he's wide open, he drops. That's a great point. And that one he just made, there was a high. He had to go up and get it, pull it back down. Didn't have time to think about it. Beavers will rush four on second and ten with 30 seconds to go. Roper. And that ball's dropped. Ed Dixon. Did Doggett get a fingernail on that ball? Well, he certainly did block his vision. It looked like it was going to be a pick. Doggett was in great shape to make this interception. Here it is. He's playing him inside out. There's the ball. Hits his hand. Yep. Tips it. Takes it out of Dixon's view and knocks it away from him. Right now the Ducks need about five yards to get Evenson in range. But they have no timeouts. And this is third down and ten. The 
again a four man rush. Roper will throw it away. See the difference between Roper and Moival. Roper when he feels pressure runs to the side instead of up into the pocket where you have all your blockers. I agree. And the other thing is it's amazing to me that this defense gets that kind of pressure rushing just four guys. Allows other guys to drop back in coverage and make it more difficult for Roper. So Matt Evenson will come on with the field goal unit. And he's going to say put this ball down right there. That would make it a 53 yard field goal. And Mike Riley will use a timeout to ice Matt Evenson. And that's a good timeout because the the Beavers were a little bit confused getting guys on and off the field and it will give him more time to think about this kick. Eric Steimer is the snapper for Oregon. Justin Roper the starting quarterback getting a pat on the back from head coach Mike Bellotti. He is the holder. And if I'm playing defense knowing this is a rivalry game and there's 26 seconds left and it's fourth down and everything's gone the way it's gone today I'm thinking watch for the fake field goal. I would also be real concerned with a long field goal and how low you have to drive the ball as a kicker. Oregon State should line up all the big tall guys right in the middle and get a hand up and try to block this field goal. Mike Riley has one timeout to use and perhaps add a little more ice. 53 yards. It's long enough. It is no good. no good. Just wide right. But there is a flag. A flag is down. And I think it's going to be against Oregon State. Wow. It appeared he had enough leg on this ball. It just couldn't hook in between the post, but he may get another shot. Oh, this is a big one. 15 yards, personal foul. What is that, Mike Riley personal wants foul to know? On the defense, leaping and landing on a player. By rule, personal foul, 15 yard, first down. That's one of those calls you very rarely see. Everybody jumping, trying to block it, but if you come down on another guy, like if a linebacker comes, jumps, and comes down on a lineman, they're going to mark you 15 yards, but you very rarely see that, and now it's almost a chip shot. But again, it's on that right hash mark, Tim, we talked about, and you see with that last kick, he couldn't quite draw the ball between the uprights. This is a safety issue. Coming down, but the Ducks have a first and ten, so they've got a chance to go for the end zone here. No timeouts. What they're going to do is move the ball to the center of the field. And Roper does just that. Well, that's good coaching. Now they got to hustle. That is good coaching. That's what I thought OSU would have done. Well, you know, they could just take this ball, snap it, and kill it. Down to 10 seconds. They're set. They've got time. Evenson. No good. They should have lined up their offense and killed the clock. They had enough downs. You know what, Dan? You just said good coaching, and it went from great coaching to total confusion. Now, how does that happen? They couldn't get guys off the field. They couldn't line up offensively for the field goal. They didn't play the clock play, as you said, toss it into the ground. Consequently never got set and this is how close they came to winning the Civil War in regulation. Well, That's why they call it a rivalry. Legends are made on days and in games like this. You know there's only been one overtime game in the Civil War that was won by the Beavers in that game back in 98 that Terry Baker was telling us about the Beavers won it 44 to 41. Had six scoreless ties in this rivalry. They're not used to 28 28. Well, one thing's for sure, we will not have a tie. We will play this one out 
until the cows come home. Aaron Strong, AJ Tuatelli, Patrick Chung, Max Unger coming out for the coin toss. And that will determine the choice of offense, defense, or which end of the field. Each team gets one possession from the opponent's 25 yard line per overtime until winners decided no game clock. Play clock will run, and uh, you must go for the two pointer starting in the third overtime. Yeah. I love these That's rules. That's the great rule. That is a great rule there. When you've got to go for two, starting in the third overtime. Yeah, I'm with you. I like this. This is the way all overtime should be played. I don't like the NFL style. And most teams uh, obviously will go on defense, so they know what they have to do when they get the ball on offense. And also, Eric Doggett. Gunderson telling Jack Foliard what to do. So it will be Oregon ball at the 25 yard line. We've got overtime in the Civil War from Eugene. Sold out Autzen Stadium getting a little bang for their buck this afternoon, Tim. Well, and Oregon had a great chance to win it. You see 78 there running off. They had too many men on the field. Now they've got 11. Now there's confusion. Now they come back. Roper takes a knee. Now watch the ball. He doesn't turn the laces. They're scrambling, and they never got a good field goal attempt out of there. And on first down, Jonathan Stewart gets a yard. Jonathan Stewart. Almost looks like he's ball. telling yeah. to spike it. Yeah. And it appeared that Evenson said, hey, come on back here. So Evenson didn't get the message on the quarterback spike, which would have killed the clock and given him time to regroup. That's where he's got to be a leader and just do what the coach told him. Here's Roper, the reverse. Derek Jones. Jones to the 20. Jones to the 10. Out of bounds at the five. Flag down. This one's coming back. An illegal block on the outside. Garen Strong. Going to get flagged. Had him from behind. Actually, just came and, and wrapped him up from behind and pushed him. Derek Jones, the uh, speedster from Long Beach Poly High School. Jones did a great job, didn't he? Getting around the corner Man. and ducking under the tackler and turning it up. Holding on the offense number 21. A 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Second down. Garen Strong, here he is right here. Now just watch what happens at the end of this play right there. He's pushing him from behind and pushes him out of bounds. And Brandon Hughes never had a chance with uh, Strong behind him like that. Down in Tempe, the Wildcats and Sun Devils just getting underway. That was a spot of the foul penalty. It was a nine yard gain, 10 yard penalty. So it comes back to be a second down and 10. Mike Bellotti trying to get a clarification. Here's Stewart. And Stewart in pain every step he takes. It's going to bring up another one of those long third down situations, though, for Roper. Pressure on the offensive line now. They're just 4 17 on third down conversions tonight. Roper 10 of 22. Third down and six. Four man rush for the Beavs. Roper got Dixon. Dixon has a first down. Equipment goes flying as Dixon goes inside the 10 yard line. Second catch of the afternoon for Ed Dixon, and it's a huge one. What a great job, too, by Roper to sit in and wait for him to clear. Comes off the right side. And he just sits over the middle. Roper was looking left, came back to the middle, and there he was. Great job and by he, Dixon. He had time to throw. Broke the tackle of Afalava and Doggett. First and goal now. Stewart, left side. 
And Stewart is going to get dropped for a yard loss. Well, there's no question defensively what they're doing. They're gearing up just for the run. They're gearing up for Stewart, and they're saying to the DBs, you guys cover out there because we're loading the box. Curtis Coker with great penetration. They don't want Oregon to get an easy one. They don't want them to get that big play, so they're they're loading the box on them. Second and goal, backed up now to the 10-yard line. Here's Dixon. Stewart bouncing to the outside. Peyton's got him, and he's down for another loss. That time they only had seven guys in the box, and they came with the blitz. They brought Darlin hard. Here comes the blitz right up the middle. And then the containment and the fill on the outside when the DBs get involved. Fans thought he may have uh, had his face mask grabbed by Peyton. Well, Peyton, the safety, came up to finish that thing off. Loss of one back to the 11 yard line. Third down for Roper over the middle. And that's Dixon, but Dixon is tackled immediately by Derek Doggett. And the field goal team will come out. Davidson is 13 of 17 on the year. This one a relative chip shot of 25 yards. Again, Justin Roper is the holder. Right hash. Perfect. Time now to check in with Stan Fred. Stan? All right, Dan, we're taking everybody out to Tempe as soon as they're done. Arizona and Arizona State underway. Tough start for the Sun Devils. Rudy Burgess with the fumble. Spencer Larson with the recovery and Arizona in business. Meanwhile, the backyard brawl, no score so far. Pittsburgh and West Virginia underway on ESPN. West Virginia trying to get to New Orleans in the national championship game. All right, thank you, Stan. Oregon on the board in overtime, but just with a field goal. So Oregon State knows exactly what they have to do. They come out with three wide receivers for Lyle Moival. Matt Severson, the tailback. First and ten. Rodgers in motion. Severson. Not much on that left side. Maybe one, maybe two yards. David Fa'atete and company on that D-line. Mike Riley trying to rally his troop. Nick Aliotti up here in the box, the defensive coordinator, trying to rally his guys. Trying to milk this thing for everything it's worth. Second down and nine for the Beavers. Three wide receivers to the top of the screen. In motion comes Powers. Moyval, incomplete. Trying to get it to his tight end. That's Howard Crooms had a big day today. Jerome Boyd had real good coverage. Cerna getting ready on the sidelines, Tim. Boy, talk about pressure, huh? Well, and they're putting some pressure on him, too, because this is a long, long field goal. They need to pick up some yardage here. It's third down in the taxi ride for the Beavers. Third down and nine. Out of the gun goes Moival. He's got an incomplete pass over the middle. Ball thrown just a little bit low to Daryl Catchings. It appeared that Catchings, if he makes the catch, might have gone to the end zone. Boy, Val had to get rid of it. He was under a little bit of pressure. Really forced him to throw low. So, I mean, it was. It was the defense that forced this play. Now brings up a long field goal. Brandon Bear with the pressure. 41 yard try to tie the game for Alexis Cerna. Kavanaugh to put it down. Cerna kicks it. It is good. 41 yards for Alexis Cerna. You bet. And I mean, it's just squeezed in that upright. And Cerna's pumped. 
that. Time now to check in in Tempe, Arizona with Dave Patch. Dave, how you doing? Hey Dave, we've got a good one here in Eugene as well. Nothing like a rivalry game. Thank you, Dave. Tie game here in Eugene. Nothing like rivalry weekend. SC and UCLA playing Arizona, Arizona State, and the Civil War. And the 100th backyard brawl with West Virginia trying to get into the national championship game and Morgantown against Pittsburgh. So now Oregon has the choice of which end of the field to take. Whether to take it on offense or defense, obviously the Ducks will play defense. And will stay at this end of the field, the west end of Autzen Stadium. Really no wind to speak of. The wind that is blowing, uncharacteristically, is blowing out of the east. So the kickers have that breeze at their backs. Gunderson looked down the other end as they go down to that side where their fans are. Looked at the other end and just kind of waved them off. If Boy Bow could get some more offense this series. Uh, he's got three wide receivers in the game, and Matt Severson as his tailback. Under center he goes. Rogers in motion. Rogers has got it. Breaks a tackle. To the outside. Rogers turns the corner. 10 5 touchdown, James Rogers. How about Tommy Ajman, Tim had a shot at him at the line of scrimmage. How about a fly sweep with the 10 3 guy? Here he is, the handoff, the timing, looking for a block, breaks the tackle, and once he gets around the corner, see you later. Great play by Rogers. The little guy could flat out fly, and it was a good call. Just by the his, Beavers. That's just his second rushing touchdown of the year, but he is the second leading rusher for the Beavers behind the great Evanson Bernard. Here's Cerna. That's an important PAT. He's got it right down the middle. Cerna now kicking with confidence after that field goal, and now the extra point. Extra point right there would have been good from 40. This is Oregon State's first lead since the score was 21 14 in the second quarter. Thanks to that man right there. Five foot six, 160 pound true freshman from Richland, Texas. That's what's great about this overtime system now. Oregon's got to score, get the extra point. And the next overtime, if they get there, will be, they'll have to go for two. So Roper goes back into the gun with Jonathan Stewart to his left side. And he gets to Stewart up the middle. And Stewart's got six yards. Joey LaRock tripped him up there, but Stewart looking good on that run, cutting off his left foot, not his right foot. This is the time now when you want the defense to gamble a little bit as well. Probably why LaRock couldn't LaRock. make that tackle as you look at all that tape on his left hamstring. So second and four for the Ducks. Stewart in trouble now and down he goes. Dorian Smith and Jeff Van Orso plugged up that hole quickly. Dorian Smith has played a spectacular ball game. He's just about everywhere. He never even left his feet that time and didn't go down with the tackle. Instead just had a great big bear paw on him and held him up. And waited for help, and that's when Van Orso also took him to the ground. So third and six, Oregon has three wide receivers at the bottom of the screen. Roper, four-man rush over the middle. Jason Williams has got it, but he's short of the first down by about that much. But you know it's two-down territory. You have no other choice, so they will. Obviously go for it here on fourth down needing just a yard. Chip, Chip Kelly. Face in his hand. Here's Roper. Stewart and Stewart didn't get stop. It. Ball game over. 
The Beavers have beaten the Ducks for the first time here at Autzen Stadium since 1993. And Dan, that's where the spread attack, I think, hurts you. Just put him under center, run a quarterback sneak. But that's it, ball game. Here it is again. They stay in the spread. They only needed inches. Offensive line gets stood up. There's Dorian Smith again. Comes down number 93, makes the first contact, and it's over. Dorian Smith and Derek Doggett. Outstanding Civil War games for both of them. Both seniors on senior day here in Eugene. So Mike Riley has now beaten the Ducks and snapped the losing streak here in Autzen Stadium. Our final score, Oregon State 38, Oregon 31. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Coming up next, the Arizona Wildcats and the number 13 Arizona State Sun Devils for Tim Brandt, Todd Harris, and our entire outstanding crew. I'm Dan Fouts. Now let's take you out to Tempe. Dave Cash and Bob Davey. Take it away, boys. The point has